Welcome for our Deeper Renovation Joint Workshop 2.0. I am Michelle, and today I will moderate this webinar with the support of Augusta Cleris from R2M. Maybe we can just wait a few seconds because I see that more and more people are connecting. So maybe let's just wait a little bit to give the opportunity to all our attendees to join us. Before starting, I would really like uh, uh, to thank you for your interest in our project, and I'm really happy that you are with us today. Okay, so I think that, uh, yes, few people's connected. Uh, we can start. I can start to introduce the webinar. Meanwhile, uh, more people will join us. So, Deep Renovation Joint Workshop 2.0 was organized by RINA. I am Michelle, as I told you, and I work for RINA, which is an international company boasting 3,900 colleagues working from 200 offices situated in 70 countries. Uh, we are active in several sectors, from energy to transport and infrastructure, and today we have decided to organize this workshop in the framework of Sustainable Places 2020 because it is a very important event where all the key industrial players and the research communities bring. And I would like to thank the event organizers, which is R2M Solutions, because it has created this very useful format. And our aim today is to bring research results closer to the market. And this is made possible for by R2M Solutions and sustainable places. In particular, as I told you before, I am Michelle. I work as Communication and Dissemination Manager at RINA, and today I will moderate this workshop supported by Augusta Cleris from R2M Solutions. So, Augusta, if, as you are here, if you want to say hello, please. <laughs> okay. So, to... <laughs> there's no audio, I guess. Yeah, well. okay. <laughs> <laughs> My microphone is on now. Thank you, Michelle. Um, thank you to all the panelists. As I'm sure we're going to have a very, very useful and interesting session. Uh, uh, my name is uh, with Gile Giuseppe, it's my colleague. I'll change that in two seconds. <laughs> and uh, I would like just to explain to you very quickly how the questions work. So, you know, in these new times, we cannot do a lot of a very interactive workshops. So the way we have to interact with you is uh, by your questions. So since now you have the question box, Michelle, could you? Yeah, please? it's at the, at the end of the presentation, but yes, oh, I can move. Uh, uh, no, no, we can. Sorry. Okay, it's going on very <laughs> fast. <laughs> well, so you yeah. are a spo spoiler of what is going uh, to be next. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here. Yes, yes, here. Sorry about that. <laughs> going on. Okay. There is no uh, mysteries anymore. <laughs> okay. I'm a boosted spoiler. Okay. So Sorry this is that. the current. <laughs> but it's okay so, because I think that the people are still connected. So some of them will have some surprises at <laughs> our yeah, so and people can go. relax relax with our laughs and mistakes because it happens to everyone, right? Yeah, I, <laughs> okay, I, I so, break the ice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was all planned, icebreaker. So you will see, all the attendees will see this box, so where you can ask your questions. You will not see the, asks, the questions you ask, only uh, Michelle and I will see it, and Michelle will moderate the, the, the Q&A. Uh, it's very important that you don't trust your brains. So if you have an idea or a question, just throw it there right away because you can lose it afterwards. And uh, all the questions will have an answer. If we cannot answer during the webinar because you don't have time, we will be sure to connect you with the person you want to, ha to have an answer. And there will be a follow-up of this session. And that's all for me. Thank you, Michelle. And, and Thank you. sorry for the icebreaker. No problem, no problem. So I just come back. And so please do not worry if you don't see that we answer to your question immediately because there is a dedicated session at the end. 
So today we are going to talk about five H2020 projects to endure, envision, insulate, Renozeb and beam speed. And now I would like to introduce you to the speakers who are here with us today. So on behalf of P2 Endure project, we have the honor to have the project coordinator, Andre Van Delft, who is the CEO of Demo Consultant. And uh, Demo Consultant is uh, an independent consultancy dealing with strategic management, technical advice and software modeling for the real estate building. After him, we are going to have uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Mr. Fabrizio Tavaroli, who works uh, for RINA T&I uh, Land Building and Infrastructure Unit, and who is going to show us uh, the work performed in the Italian demo of p situated in Genoa. After him, we are going to have Mrs. Agnieszka Lukasewska, uh, which, uh, is who is a representative of Fasada. And Fasada is a SME construction company established in year 1992, and the company is active in both retrofit retrofitting and construction of new uh, buildings. And after her, we are going to have uh, Mr. Piotr Dimarski, uh, representative of Mostostal Warsaw, another partner of pre to endure project. And uh, um, Mostostal Warsaw is one of the largest construction companies in Poland. And last but not least, we are going to have another colleague of mine, Mrs. Claudia Portulano, which is uh, an industry uh, who is an industry customer marketing intelligence expert and is going uh, to introduce us to the results of P2Endur project survey and I'm not uh, and I'm sure that some of you have filled it in in the previous day. So on behalf of Envision Project, we have another colleague of mine, Mrs. Paola Robello, who works for RINA Transport and Infrastructure uh, Research and Innovation Team and who is going to introduce us to Envision project. Then we have Mrs. Daniela Riccardo, who is the project coordinator of Insulate, and uh, another colleague of mine, of course, who works in the TNDI research and innovation team as well. Then we are going to know a little more about the Renault Zeb project and the presentation will be made by Enrico Scoditti, who is another colleague of mine again and who works for RINA uh, Land Infrastructure and Building Unit. Last but not least, we have also the honor to have here today with us uh, Professor Timo Hartmann from the Technische Universität Berlin, which is one of the technical, uh, leading technical university in Germany. And uh, he is also the project coordinator of BeanSpeed and is going to introduce us to the, this very interesting project. So as we have spoiled before, uh, the, yeah, there are a few tips on how this webinar will work. You have noticed the webinar is automatically registered. During the webinar, we, want to, we really want to know your opinion about uh, our project. So get ready because we are going to launch some live polls. And as Augusta introduced already, there is the opportunity to make questions. So please do not hesitate. And we are going to answer at the very end during the Q&A session that which that will last uh, half an hour. So now I would like uh, to, let's break the ice again and let's get to know each other a little bit better. So I'm launching the first live pause because I really want to know more about you. So the first question, is from which countries are you for, are you from? I see that there are uh, several people connected, and we would like to know if you are from Italy, Netherlands, France, Belgium. Unfortunately, go to webinar allows only five answers, so I couldn't uh, list all the countries. But if you are from other countries, do not hesitate to to write in the question panel from which countries are you from. So I think that uh, I see that 73% already voted. I invite all the other people. To, okay, so 100% voted. We have uh, a majority from Italy, and then we have an 18% from other countries. 
So please, if you want to share uh, your, I mean, your uh, country in the question panel, do not hesitate. I'm just launching the last live poll for this introductory uh, quest, the session. So we would like also to know what is your main job of a field. So if you are active in the research or if you are an industrial key player or other as well. So please share uh, your experience with us. I see that uh, almost half of our audience has voted. We have uh, for now 75% of the audience voted, so don't be shy and just uh, let us know. Okay, maybe I can close this survey. Uh, I think that the tool is still collecting the responses, but okay, I will close it now. So the result is 30% research, 30% industry, and 30% other. So I'm very happy to have this mixed audience because our aim, as I, as I explained before, is to bring research to the market. And it's very important to have both factors with us today. So now we can start. And uh, I will give the floor to Andre Van Delf, who is the first speaker today, and who is going to show us the P2Endure project. So now, Andre, you have received presenter mode. Yes. You should be able to see. Yes, we can first. see it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank. Thank you very much, uh, Michelle, for this nice um, uh, professional introduction. The coming 20 minutes, um, I will um, elaborate a bit on uh, Peter and Jor, uh, the research uh, project for plug-and-play products and process um, innovation for uh, energy-efficient buildings. After my presentation, it will be followed by three uh, presentations about the demonstration uh, cases. But before doing so, um, again, I will explain something about the entire concept. Uh, the objectives of this project, uh, what kind of innovation did we aim at at the beginning? What was the ambition? Uh, what did we achieve? I will explain something about the case studies and the prototypes and then some final remarks and some uh, intermediate, I should say, results, although we are almost at the end of the project, but it's still intermediate. The lessons learned, future challenges and a brief introduction of the three demonstration cases that again will be presented by Agnieszko, Fabrizio and Piotr afterwards. Okay, what is the context for Peter and Jure? What did we um, uh, what did we encounter in the beginning? Why did we write the proposal? And what is the context during this project? And what is the status today? As we all know, um, there are uh, high ambitions uh, to decarbonize the building stock uh, by 2050. What we also know is that uh, the indoor air is often two or two up to five times more polluted than outside air and even during the, the COVID uh, era as we all know there is even more uh, attention what is the quality how should we ventilate etc because it's getting more and more important these days to get these things under control for our own health there is as we know a systemic upgrade of the EU building stock needed uh, if we do not um, think of if we do not work on altogether uh, on a systemic upgrade then we are for sure not going to meet the requirements and the goals that we have set ourselves. Uh, another fact, one out of 10 Europeans cannot properly warm their homes in the winter and during summertime, one out of five cannot properly cool them. So that is uh, quite a big number, um, uh, I would say. Next to that, um, it is assessed that 100,000 deaths in winter are caused by energy poverty and what you see also in other projects uh, that there's getting more and more attention uh, to this energy poverty. Yearly uh, is assessed uh, that there is a, a 3 billion euro health related problems due to the indoor air quality and what we also noticed in the beginning and that is getting uh, more and more available 
that there are prefabricated solutions um, that are available on the market. So it is out there and we should be able to use it. But the question is how and how can we do it effectively and efficiently? And as we know, and I'll come back to that at the end of the, this presentation as well, to meet all those goals, all those requirements, this uh, ambitious, those ambitions, then we know for sure that the renovation pace at this moment is way too slow. So in some graphics, uh, probably no news for you, but uh, European building stock, they are uh, responsible for 40% of the energy consumption, 36% uh, of the CE2, 65% is older than 40 years. Uh, the renovation pace uh, is assessed to be about 1% uh, per year. And there is things about times, the persons and the cost that we do have some concerns about. So this is the context uh, that we're operating in. What are we trying to change uh, with P2 Endure? Well, the P2 Endure project is about promoting evidence-based innovative solutions for deep renovation based on prefabricated plug-and-play systems in combination with on-site robotic 3D printing and BIM. And it's demonstrated and monitored at uh, nine real and two virtual projects in four geo clusters with an EU-wide replication potential. So as you can see, evidence-based demonstration, that is key in this project. So it is about uh, enhancing products, uh, etc. It is about research, of course. It is about inventing new uh, ICT tools and the integration uh, using an holistic approach. But it is really the key is in demonstration to put it into real life practices, prove that it is doable, that it is feasible, and that it can be replicated. That is, in its essence, what P2 Endure is all about. We were supposed to uh, finish this project uh, during the summer, but due to COVID, um, we had to uh, extend. Um, so we are extending until the beginning of uh, next year. So therefore, we are still monitoring. We are still collecting data in order uh, to analyze the results and to write down the recommendations and to define the next steps after this project. So the objectives, again, Energy reduction, uh, also including the embodied uh, energy. The targets that we have set through this uh, deep renovation is to reduce 60%. Time-wise, we should be able to reduce, and this is about the uh, renovation uh, process, obviously, we should reduce it with 50%. The cost, that should be decreased by another 15%, and not quantified here, but the indoor environmental quality, that should be really increased. Of course, not decreased, but increased. And um, by reducing uh, the time, but not only that, we are really aiming to decrease the disturbance for all the uh, inhabitants. Um, and most preferably, people can stay in their house, uh, do not have to move elsewhere, etc. So we are, um, carefully paying attention to all the techniques and solutions that we are applying, that they um, will serve all these goals in order to come up with the best optimal solution. And last but not least, the replicability. That is something if we really want to achieve uh, that ambition of increasing uh, the renovation pace from 1% to 2%, then we really should think about how can we replicate uh, these things. And if I am correct, then uh, I think it is time to raise our first question in the poll. Um, yes. Yes, thanks you, Andre. I'm launching the first live poll. And uh, just one uh, uh, thing I would like to, to tell Andre, I cannot see the number of your slides from here. So please uh, remind me when I have to launch because I cannot see it. No so problem. First, no. Thanks. So I have launched the, the first poll, so our attendees just uh, uh, start voting, please. The question is, how many hams do you need for effective renovation? Have, we have five possible answers, one, two, three, four, and I don't know. So I think that uh, 
our audience has started to vote. 40, almost half of them have voted. So please uh, keep, uh, keep saying your opinion. It's very important for us to, to know. So almost 70% of our audience has voted for now. Okay, 77%. So the time is running out and I need to close the live poll, unfortunately, but almost 80% voted. So I'm sharing the results and we have 30% who voted three. So uh, three are needed for effective renovation. 20% believes that four are needed for effective renovation and half of our audience don't know the answer, but uh, it's good because maybe you will have an idea uh, at the end of uh, these workshops. So I just stop, you can go on with your presentation, Andre, thanks. Thank you, thank you very much. So um, either there are some people that really know what they're talking about, or we have some honest people uh, who are telling that they really do not know. So let me elaborate a bit on that. Um, if, so what you can see, um, if you want to fix something that is broken, uh, that there is something that we all know, um, band aid or plasters. Uh, the company who is providing that, that is 3M. And 3M is um, a company that is not only providing band aid, but all kind of uh, adhesive uh, materials. Everybody uses post-its, uh, I guess, or adhesive uh, tape. So again, if you want to fix something, and uh, we need really to fix uh, the European building uh, stock, because to a certain extent it is broken, it is damaged, it is injured. So we really need to heal that. So um, you could argue that we did that we do need indeed uh, three M's, but to disappoint the people that think that they had a, a right answer, the right answer should be four M, because using three M, just putting band aids uh, on it, that is just a temporarily uh, um, uh, solution. Uh, it is like putting duct tape to fix something. And with P2 Endure, aiming at deep renovation, we really aim to have a thorough, a real deep renovation in order to fix it structurally. So this 4M model, and that is something that was written already in the proposal, that is key to our approach and to our um, process. So during my presentation, but also during the presentations of the demonstration cases, you will see this 4M uh, model since it is, uh, again, key in the approach that we took. So the first M is for mapping. It is about performance condition before, uh, sorry, about the performance and the condition assessment before renovation. So actually stating uh, the situation as is at the moment before renovation. The second phase, that is the modeling, and there we are focusing on the renovation design. So what can we do about it? What is the optimal um, renovation design that we can, in the third phase, that we can make? So the third M stands for making. It is the manufacturing off-site, since it is prefabricating, and assembling on-site of all the plug-and-play solutions in order to like I said before, uh, to really decrease the hindrance and to, um, uh, to decrease the time that is needed on site. And then last but not least, it's the fourth and final uh, phase. It is the monitoring. And there we are monitoring the performance and the condition after this deep renovation. So diving a bit more into detail uh, in the first phase, uh, that is the mapping. What you can think of it is the condition assessment before the renovation. It is, for example, 3D scanning and automating it to the BIM uh, uh, models. So really speeding up and automating uh, this process from 3D scanning to BIM. It is about data collection via sensors. And this is the comfort I uh, provided by one of our partners, UniVPM from Italy. So that is something that is placed in the buildings to constantly real-time monitor uh, all kinds of indoor air quality uh, parameters. We have apps uh, in order to do the survey, the condition uh, on site, um, 
in order to get a real good assessment of the building as is. We are uh, generating the BIM models. We are taking thermal um, images and uh, combining it with the BIM models. And of course, we have uh, software to analyze uh, this created um, as is BIM uh, model to, to do all kind of analysis uh, with it. Another thing, the mapping is for the renovation design, the BIM to BIM process. Uh, as you might know, uh, a BIM uh, model is getting more and more available, it's getting more and more important, but it's lacking the information to make, uh, to make proper um, energy analysis. So therefore, within this project, um, we have automated the BIM to BIM process as well. And there is a parametric uh, modeler because if you have the building uh, on site as is, and you want to include new, solu new solutions, then of course you want to analyze beforehand what the, um, what the clashes uh, are, what the optimal combinations uh, are. So in that sense, we are combining the solutions with the, um, the S-built models in order to come up with the best solution. So how do we do that? Um, first step, we are creating a baseline uh, of the energy uh, model. All kinds of tools and systems uh, are needed uh, for that. The second step is the validation. So we can create a baseline theoretically, but we want to validate or calibrate it based on the real uh, numbers, the real figures, by combining and checking them against the energy bills. After that, we create the post-renovation model. So first we have the existing situation, we calibrate it, and then we create the new situation as if the renovation was already uh, executed. And then we will make an evaluation of the performance of the renovation. And then the fifth step is the analysis of further actions to achieve the 60% as we said in the beginning, uh, that that is our ambition for the energy savings. So this is done uh, in phase of modeling. Then we continue to the making. And that is, well, personally speaking, but I'm a bit biased, one of the coolest things that we uh, could do, because it is not only about theoretical research, but this is really applied and it is really checked uh, in real life situations. As you can see here, a solution um, uh, that can um, put plug and play within the building. It is about the facades, but it's also about on-site ro uh, robotics that do bricklaying or that do plastering. And um, later in this presentation, I will come uh, back shortly to that. And then the last situation or the last uh, phase, I should say, that is the monitoring. So the refurbishment, the renovation is executed. People are um, using the buildings uh, again, and there we are monitoring uh, and guaranteeing the high quality um, of the indoor air uh, quality. And here you can see an example um, of uh, a sensor that is in a very uh, easy way, just giving feedback to the users, what the quality of the CO2 uh, is. Is it okay? Is it well, becoming tricky or is it exceeding the thresholds? Uh, and these are implemented in those demonstration cases as well. And all kind of analysis based on uh, images uh, and collected data. So to summarize, what kind of prototypes and innovations were we able uh, to demonstrate? Well, there are several components for building envelopes, so lightweighted plug and play facades, plug and play facades elements, smart energy windows where you can see examples on the right hand side and entire rooftop retrofitting or extension modules so this is related to the building envelopes uh, focusing on the technical systems we have a plug and play uh, bathroom unit we have plug and play hvac systems the indoor environment control systems and we have the connection to the energy grid and the renewable energy sources production on-site technologies, the 3D scanning, as you could already see some pictures, the laser and photogrammetry, always a difficult word to pronounce, and the on-site 3D printing and robotics, where as a spin-off, one of our partners in the consortium, um, Robot at Work, they were already able to sell um, in real life situation to contractors, a couple of them uh, partially developed robotics uh, or the partially in P2 uh, developed robotics. 
And overall, we have all kinds of ICT tools to uh, link all these things uh, together and facilitate these processes. So again, it is a lot about demonstration cases. Uh, we have them, you could say, all over uh, the place in Europe, different geo clusters. So we have three in the Netherlands, Utrecht, Enschede and Lekkerkerk. One in Germany, it's in Menden. Denmark, Korslokken. In Poland, Gdynia and Warsaw. And in Italy, Reggio Emilia, Genova and Ancona. And the last one was a virtual one. So in all these different building types, different um, geographical uh, locations, we have applied the systems and are still collecting and uh, collecting the results and making recommendations based on this. So to combine everything all together, we have uh, the demonstration cases here. Here you see, well, very small images though, but it's more to have an impression uh, at the moment, all the applied enough to solutions, the plug and play solutions that were applied in the several demonstration cases. And on the horizontal X, we see the uh, the KPIs and the intermediate assessment of that. And by the end of the project, of course, we will fully fill this table. So the Peter and your e-marketplace, uh, it is nice to come up with all kinds of solutions, but it's still only about 10 demonstration cases. So what we really should need is something to replicate, to upscale. And that is uh, something that we have developed within the Peter and your project as well a P2 and your e-marketplace where suppliers can offer their um, uh, solutions and where the uh, demand side can choose whether those available solutions would fit in in their renovation projects. And now Hi, I would Andrei, like to... Sorry, Andrea Augusta here. Just to let you know that you have uh, one minute left to wrap up, please. I know, Thank I you. know. Yeah, okay. okay. So we do have time for the questions, right? Yeah, I think it's good to ask questions. Uh, okay. So one question I would like to ask, do you believe in an e-marketplace um, for the renovation process? And it's simple, yes or no? Yes, I have just launched it. So please, uh, uh, I would like to draw, draw the attention of our audience to the live polls. So it's very simple, the question, do you believe or not in, a, in the concept of the e-marketplace? 43% voted. I can spoiler you that for now we have whole, uh, all positive feedbacks, so I'm very happy. 64% <laughs> voted. Okay, so since uh, we are running out of time, uh, uh, I'm just uh, closing the survey right now. 64% voted. And yes, we have 100% uh, uh, of yes. So I'm really glad. That's... So I'm just. That's yes, very that's encouraging. Good. That's very encouraging. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't well, know if do you want to launch the last one about the renovation rate or if you wanted to tell something before. I will go quickly through the others. Uh, okay. We don't see your screen anymore. Do, do you want me to launch it? Yes, please. Uh, okay, sorry. So the other question is: current energy renovation rate is one hundred uh, is one percent. Sorry, one percent. How much would be would be feasible according to you? So we have five different answer. The first one is one percent, one and a half percent, two percent, two and a half percent, or three percent. I see that uh, uh, some of you already voted. But please, uh, which is according to you, the most feasible uh, renovation rate? 30% voted, but uh, we really want to know your answer about this. So I just give you some more time. Okay, so 50% voted. So really few seconds left and then I'm closing this uh, live poll. Okay, so. 64% voted, 70, great, great. Okay, so I'm closing the survey. 
and sharing the results. So we have 10% who voted for 1.5% renovation rate, 50% who voted for 2% renovation rate, then 10% who voted for 2.5% renovation rate, and finally 30% of our audience thinks that the most feasible renovation rate is 3%. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, also to Andre for this uh, uh, introductory presentation. And I think that now it's time to leave the floor to uh, Fabrizio Tavaroli, who is going to introduce you uh, a little bit more in detail about uh, the demo in Genoa. Please do not hesitate to make questions. Hi Fabrizio, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. I hope that you can see my screen at the moment. Yeah. Uh, thank yeah. you very much. Uh, I'd like also to thank you, Andre, for a great presentation, uh, not just for introduction of the general concept of feature endure, but also of the framework of the 4Ms uh, used for the um, activities we did on the demo sites. And so I don't have to explain it again in my presentation. I will try uh, to focus more on the actual uh, activities we did on the demo site in Genoa. Uh, my presentation today, even if it's a short one, I, I hope to uh, try to explain and share with you what we did. It, it was a lot of work, I have to say, you will see it. Uh, the, the items, the topics I'd like to discuss with you today are, uh, first of all, a, a description of the demo site. Uh, then the renovation uh, design process, uh, the making and installation of the solution on the, on the demo site. A uh, um, short uh, discussion about the impact improvement uh, related to their quality changes and improvement on the demo after the installation of our technologies. And then a uh, wrap up, uh, which are the results and the lesson learned during the, the process, which is at the final stage at the moment. Uh, first of all, of course, uh, a, little, a little bit of context of the uh, our demo site. The demo site is located in Genoa. Uh, I think that unfortunately uh, now the city is uh, well known all, all around Europe because of the bridge collapsing in the city, collapsing in the city. But uh, we, for which uh, I have to say also, Rina work on the reconstruction. So we are very, we are very proud of our, of our colleague working on that. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, now you, you can see pretty much where it's located in Genoa. It's by the sea. It's a, uh, it's a city, it's a very long city. I mean, it stretches for almost 30 kilometers uh, uh, on the sea. And uh, the building is located in, in, an, um, uh, in the western part of the city, in Pegli which is uh, uh, still a very dense uh, area. You can see it it's in, a, in, this, in, this, in a small uh, image on, on the left, uh, that uh, our building is um, uh, in, a, in a very dense uh, developed area of, of the city. And here you can see an Im image of the building as it is at the moment. Uh, yeah, the uh, building is a, as a nursery, it's a name of nursery school. Uh, you can see, uh, uh, oh, sorry for that. Uh, you can see here a uh, um, general layout of the area. It's not, it's not a, a big one, uh, but it's an interesting one. It's a very interesting building. I'll explain that a little bit. I'll talk about uh, that a little bit later. Uh, you can see just a couple of, a couple of classrooms in the building. Uh, some uh, other functions refectory on the, on the center of the building, and some other uh, common spaces and uh, uh, other toilets and other spaces for uh, uh, children and uh, teachers working on, uh, on the building. And uh, why I'm saying, I'm saying even it's a small one, it's a very interesting one. It's because uh, it's a listed building. Uh, the building uh, uh, was built in the 30s, and uh, it's one of the first uh, uh, rationalist buildings in Genoa. Uh, I, don't have, I don't know if I have so much time to talk about it, but I'd like to share with you just a couple of uh, uh, information about uh, the history of the building. Uh, we had to do 
uh, some extensive research on the building uh, because uh, we, had, we had to deal with uh, the cultural heritage office uh, for the renovation, all the renovation uh, process. So, as I said, uh, the building was built in the 30s. Originally, it was a local market. And uh, uh, as you can see by the year 1930s, so you're aware of the history of Italy, uh, it was uh, uh, also part of a plan of the Italian regime, I have to say that, uh, to, in order to put the people in a single place and try to monitor their activities. So it was a very good building, it was a, a very important function, but unfortunately the first part of the history was not completely, uh, let's say, uh, very nice and uh, so I'm glad that the moment uh, even building that uh, as you can see by the picture didn't change uh, a lot I mean it's almost the same uh, now uh, but changes the function it's a uh, nursing school uh, on, the, on the first floor I have to say also the, the, uh, the uh, other function and including the you know, other part of the building dedicated to social uh, activities for the elder people and uh, so and uh, it's a very important uh, uh, building in the, in the area of Pedi. Uh, Going to uh, the first uh, M of the process, I have to say that uh, the municipality uh, was already uh, involved in, uh, in, a, in a, an evaluation of the possible energy improvement of the building. For, so, for this specific uh, uh, demo site, uh, the mapping part was uh, definitely easier. We, we, we didn't have to perform specific uh, or advanced uh, uh, mapping uh, uh, solutions, uh, put in place some advanced uh, uh, mapping solutions as, as for the other demo site, demo site that we will see, see later, because uh, some information related to the, the energy consumption were, were already available, uh, as well as uh, and the digital uh, drawings uh, of the building. So we had uh, all the input uh, required to provide uh, the BIM model. So uh, what we did is started. So the step one and step two illustrated before by Andre, uh, the, the baseline evaluation, of course, we did it again, but it was uh, in a way easier because uh, we had uh, uh, a lot of information already uh, available. Uh, what we had to do as the first demo of the project uh, to uh, perform this BIM to BAM uh, uh, process, so we had to uh, investigate uh, which was the uh, most effective way to go from BIM uh, to BAM. Uh, so we had to work uh, on the BIM model, try to simplify it. And uh, yeah, maybe so, they did this say, uh, they didn't talk about uh, our main driver on the BIM to BAM pro uh, process. On, on this project was to try to use uh, as much as possible uh, open source and free web software. So what we did is starting from the BIM model and then trying to use, uh, we did, in this case, we use SketchUp and the Energy Plus in order to, do, to, uh, to use this kind of approach on the software. But anyway, so we had to work on the model in order to simplify it and to make it com compatible with uh, the entire process and in order to translate it to SketchUp and then to Energy Plus and do the evaluation. So going back to this app, we did uh, the post-renovation model. You can see some uh, technologies we uh, put in the model and uh, the evaluation of the performance uh, of the renovation, of course, uh, and we established a uh, different scenario uh, uh, in order to achieve the 60% energy saving goal. I have to say that uh, uh, we worked uh, closer with, uh, very close to with the uh, public office dealing with the renovation, so we provided them different options, uh, and uh, some of them, I mean, uh, you will see that in the next slide, I'll go to the next slide, uh, are directly included uh, in the solution provided by the uh, p your product, but uh, other uh, solution, uh, fine-tuning solution of uh, mechanical and electrical services and other uh, strategies to, to achieve the 60%, was outside the future um, project, but already, uh, let's say, included in the plans for uh, the renovation uh, uh, done by the municipality. Uh, so uh, the solution we selected uh, at the plug and play solution we selected from Future for uh, the general demo, demo case is a smart window one. Uh, 
uh, produced by Digitech. Uh, this uh, window have uh, several uh, advantages compared to traditional uh, solutions. So first of all, uh, the windows can be locked and uh, make uh, sealed uh, by mechanical and electrical uh, actuation, let's say. Uh, and can guarantee this window can guarantee a ventilation between the frame and the sash for uh, uh, guaranteeing a uh, improved indoor comfort by uh, inflating inflating the gasket. And then uh, uh, the reverse we uh, can offer reversibility across season to control solar gain uh, in uh, winter and uh, and summer with. Uh, considering that uh, the, the glasses on the windows have different uh, uh, performance, uh, performances uh, uh, in the different season, and, uh, and uh, by rotating, of course, the windows, and uh, it, it, it is easy to clean. It's something, something, something not so important, but you can imagine you will see the, the meshes of the windows installed. It's very important to be able to do that safely. I just want to highlight that uh, the smart windows installation, just smart windows installation, can guarantee a 25, 21% energy saving uh, compared to the, to the baseline. It seems a lot, but yeah, uh, you, you will see the original ones and you can understand why. Uh, as I said before, um, we have to work a lot uh, with the cultural and heritage office uh, in general to achieve uh, uh, and, uh, the permit uh, to uh, install the, the wheels on the building. Uh, we uh, had several meetings with them. I just want to um, share with you our experience because uh, uh, I think uh, uh, for this specific demo is something very, and also for it, Italy, I have to say, is something very important uh, what we achieved because uh, and, and during the first meetings, uh, I see that, sorry, I see that a lot of people that is uh, following the uh, web webinar today is from Italy, so I think that they are well aware uh, uh, on the difficulties you are encountering when you're trying to put innovative uh, solutions uh, in a listed, a listed building. So uh, the first part of our activity was just to try to explain which were the potential advantages for the, of this kind of solution, but even more important, uh, the uh, way we will, we will be able to uh, match the original uh, shape and the original appearance of the building by using innovative solutions. That's something, uh, in a way, uh, very difficult to uh, share and to explain to people. Uh, I mean, in a way, which have a different uh, uh, drive in their activity, which is uh, to try to keep the building and uh, part of the building as much as possible as the, as the original. But I have to, I'm glad of that. After sharing the advantages and explaining how the 4M uh, process uh, uh, work, uh, they change their, their mind. I think they support us very uh, actively, actively, and uh, help us on achieving the best results. You, here you can see a part of the work we did. Uh, so we had uh, to uh, carefully. <laughs> Collect information on the exist, on the existing uh, uh, windows and trying. You can see also in the next slide, uh, which is part of the second M, of course. Uh, I forgot, forgot to tell about that uh, the modeling uh, uh, part of the uh, design uh, we did on the um, on the windows on the building. Uh, se in which we share several techniques uh, heritage office. And uh, we did also some uh, uh, render for uh, trying to explain that uh, uh, the final result will be uh, very similar to the uh, original one. And we achieved our goal for the first goal to, uh, to obtain the permit to, to work on, uh, on the building. So uh, it was a lot, a lot, a lot, very long process, uh, I have to say that. Uh, but uh, in the end, we've been able uh, to overcome every, every kind of problem, including uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, emergency March. So we had to uh, postpone the installation of the, of the windows. So uh, I have to, but I'd like to say that now in October is at, at, at very final stages. 
So we uh, managed to stay on the extended schedule of the project uh, uh, for the installation, and also we have uh, some time for the final monitoring. Uh, here you can see the way we installed the windows on the building, very fast and quick uh, 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 process. Uh, the uh, making of the windows, of course, uh, uh, was done uh, uh, based on the drawings you, you've seen before, and no problem occurred during the installation, it was, a peak, uh, it was a peak one. Here on the right, you can see uh, a picture on an intermediate stage of the activities. You can see that on the right, you can see the new windows, and on the left, you can see the original ones in part of the, uh, uh, on the right side, they are dismantled, but uh, uh, on the left, you can see the, the original one. And you can see that the final appearance uh, from, from the outside is very, very similar. And I have to say, uh, it's, uh, it went beyond our expectations. And also, I look for the one of the heritage office. It's very, it's very, uh, it changed a little bit uh, the color, even if you work on that, just because they are new, but the color is exactly the same, the, the shape and the appearance is exactly, exactly the same. Uh, you you Fabrizio, can see... Fabrizio, um, hi, yeah. sorry for interrupting you, Augusta here. You have to, uh, 30 seconds to go. Uh, sorry, I'll be, I'll be very quick, I'll be very quick. You can see just uh, a view on the, on the inside, and I have just one more uh, item, just uh, very quick. Uh, on the monitoring uh, of the internal air quality of the building. We did a, a baseline monitoring campaign. As I was saying before, we have to do the final one. Uh, we got uh, also, we, we tried to collect uh, the teachers and children comfort uh, uh, perceived on the, uh, on the building. And last, last information is that uh, we work on the, we are working on the uh, evaluation of the control net natural ventilation in terms of cost and, and efficacy compared to mechanical ventilation. And very important, last, last very last information, uh, we, uh, uh, we did some studies before the COVID-19 uh, to say that, uh, that the fewer, uh, this kind of network ventilation can guarantee fewer sick days for the children with all the benefits we can imagine. Uh, last slide just resumed the result we have discussed uh, during the presentation, the energy savings and let's learn the energy, the energy savings, the beam band process and the integration of the plug and play solution picture and during a listed building internal quality improvement. Uh, I'm done. Sorry if I've been uh, 30 seconds maybe longer, but uh, that's uh, pretty much it. I hope it was uh, clear. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Fabrizio. And now I will leave the floor to Agnieszka. So, Agnieszka, you have received the presentation mode. Okay, now we see already your presentation. Not in presentation mode yet. Perfect. Yes, so, now it should the floor be is yours, please. Yes. Thank you very much. My name is Agnieszka Łukaszewska, and I'm from Poland. As I was introduced, I'm a head of R&D in Fasada, an SME that is making the renovation of the building in Poland. I will tell you a few things um, about uh, our demonstration site in Gdynia. Firstly, I will give a general description. Then I will tell you something about our P2 Endure approach that we have applied. Um, I will mention the work done and the impact that we have achieved. Uh, firstly, a few words about our demo building. Uh, together with the cooperation with the municipality of Gdynia, that uh, was not uh, the member of the consortium, we have uh, selected the building that can be uh, the demonstration building in, the, in our project. Uh, we decided to go with a, a kindergarten building that was not insulation, insulated, and had very bad uh, energy performance. Uh, the, uh, the building was uh, constructed in 1965, uh, and it's attended by 130 uh, children. Uh, so our um, status when we were um, starting the, the project was that we didn't have almost any documentation, only old plans were available for the building. Now I will tell you a little bit how we decided to implement the, our uh, four um, process because the idea was not only uh, to renovate the building but in general to 
um, to implement more innovative renovation process but from the beginning. Uh, so firstly, within the mapping, our first activity uh, was to perform energy housing in order to know what uh, materials uh, are in the building and what are what is their energy characteristics. Uh, we did also the building assessment condition. The next step uh, related to the fact that we didn't have any 2D digital documentation, so we performed 3D scanning. And together with our partner from the Italian Unif PM, we have instanced the monitoring devices in order to monitor the indoor air quality uh, with uh, our devices that the name of it is ComfortEye. Uh, we monitor the temperature, humidity, CO2, and particle methods. Uh, the idea um, was to compare uh, the indoor air quality before and after the renovation. And during the modeling, we did uh, the clouds beam process. So from the uh, 3D clouds point, we have created the beam. And this was our uh, basis, because in this uh, manner, we uh, have a built beam model. Mm, and this was our basis for the monitoring and for the conventional to the building energy model and uh, making the energy analysis in order to select the most optimum renovation scenario. Uh, we have uh, analyzed different options and uh, with the final solution that we have chosen, we managed to save 65% of primary energy. Uh, after the analysis, we decided to renovate the building with a plug and play pharma cell multifunctional facade panels that were developed within the project. Um, uh, for this purpose, we did a detailed uh, renovation design uh, in BIM. Here you can see we started the works and you can see um, our workers uh, that are making the prefabricated panel. It was also for our workers a new experience because it was the first time that uh, they work with this technology. So firstly, we needed to perform some training. Nevertheless, after the work went very smooth. Here you can, you can see some photos from the demonstration. Uh, during the demonstration work also, we were um, visited by the vice president of Gdynia uh, we make some promotional movies and articles on the website Zinia, so I think we managed to have uh, the visibility of uh, our project. Here you can see the photo before um, and after renovation. Um, of course, after the renovation, uh, we are making the post-renovation monitoring and we are monitoring the same parameters. Um, here. We have some problems because due to the COVID, the kindergarten um, was stopped for a few months. Uh, so also okay. for this, we needed the extension and now we are gathering the, um, the monitoring data. Nevertheless, who knows how it will be further. Addis our additional activity in this project, uh, somehow <clears throat> related to our situation, uh, we decided to make the COVID-19 analysis. Um, we use our uh, BIM model and upload it to the uh, software developed by the SIP um, that is called Open BIM COVID-19. And our uh, idea uh, and the goal was to analyze the correctness of the applied solution and procedures against the COVID-19 for the kindergarten we um, made the verification of a maximum number of people in the rooms, uh, safe distance between people, distance between workstation and main routes attended by the employees, and um, we assess the marking and location of disinfection station. Of course, everything this was um, checked versus uh, the most actual um, regulation and guidelines that are changing and uh, the final final result was that uh, 
the kindergarten is fulfilling all the mm, requirements. Here you can, uh, on this slide, you can see mm, our um, different activities that are belonging to, to our 4M, 4M process. So for the mapping, as I told you before, it's pretty scanning energy out and monitoring, then um, in clouds to beam and development of the SBLB model, uh, the energy analysis, the beam renovation design, then uh, 4D and 5D modeling in order to prepare for the renovation work and the renovation work itself. And for the monitoring, our post-renovation monitoring and the like something additional, the COVID analysis. Mm, our last slide here, you can see the impact that we are achieved. So um, what is quite important is that we managed to have 50% uh, of time reduction in the construction work, 65% of energy reduction, and also we pointed the uh, buildings that have uh, that can be followers so that have similar structures and on which um, similar p 2 ender solution can be applied that's all thank you very much thank you Agnieszka thank you very much I will now give the floor to Piotr and I would like to remind uh, to our audience that there is uh, a Q&A session at the end. So please, if you have uh, questions or curiosity to ask Agnieszka, do it in the question panel and we are going to reply at the end. So thank you again, Agnieszka. And Piotr, the floor is yours. We okay. see your presentation. Not in presentation mode yet. Now it's perfect. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Piotr and I work in uh, Mosostal Warszawa, uh, which is a construction company in Poland. I'm a head of the Digital Transformation Department. Uh, today I will present my experience uh, from the uh, Polish demo site in Warsaw. Uh, that uh, was um, the building um, uh, was to, the, belongs to the uh, city of Warsaw. Uh, so, just a brief introduction of the, our demo sites. Uh, so, as you can see, this is a nursery building that was uh, built uh, 37 years ago, uh, so quite uh, old. And uh, when we uh, started um, uh, our work regarding the renovation, we have uh, a lot of uh, challenges. Uh, first one, it was the documentation. Uh, on the right, you can see that uh, this was the, uh, the, you can see the screen of the documentation that we received from the city. So quite difficult to start the design phase. So what we uh, have uh, done, uh, we uh, had to also follow the p 2 ender approach that was uh, already discussed today, so I will not go into details here, but I will show the examples of each uh, this uh, phase. So uh, regarding the mapping, uh, we, uh, had, we had to perform a scanning of the building uh, from outside and inside. Uh, regarding the energy audit, we had um, already some audit um, from the um, uh, national agency uh, in Poland uh, and uh, we also uh, installed uh, the product from UNIVAUPM who is a partner in this uh, project um, the tool uh, called Comfort Eye and here I will show you uh, the point cloud. So this is the results uh, of the, the scanning. Uh, just a quick introduction that this is the old part where we um, put um, installed uh, panels optimized uh, during the project. And uh, during the project, hopefully, the city of Warsaw decided to for the extension of the building so this part that you can see was uh, demolished 
uh, and um, the new part of the building was uh, built. Continue with my uh, presentation. Uh, so we also uh, was we were responsible to create a beam model uh, based on the point cloud, um, and after that we helped to the designers um, that were selected by City of Warsaw, and also to the um, our partner of the project City of Warsaw. We helped. Uh, um, analyze different renovation scenarios. Uh, on this photo, we can see uh, one of the optimized product in p 2 and projects, which is the uh, facade panels designed by Pharmacel. Uh, and here you can see uh, beam models that we uh, created. We have uh, installation uh, models that were used for designers to uh, and helped we helped them in a coordination process. And here you can see the latest renovation scenario. So this grease part are uh, on this part were mounted uh, our panels from the projects. And, and on the behind, you can see that uh, was uh, that is a new part of the building. And here, um, maybe it's a better explain that at the beginning for the renovation, the building area was 361 meters and 100 places for the uh, children. And after that, uh, when we decided to make also the extension of the building and the building area increased and we double um, places for the children. So in this project, we have also uh, social impacts. Uh, we also help um, uh, to the um, our uh, to the subcontractor of the city of Warsaw to uh, visualize um, um, the work um, and that will have to that should be performed. So here you can see the demolition of the old part, the construction of the new part of the building, and uh, soon you will see um, uh, the part that will be related to the uh, facade panels. So it was very challenging to start renovation works with other part of the works that was that were not scope of the uh, P2 Ender project. It means extension of the building. Mm, and we also wanted to demonstrate um, beam for the beam model. Uh, some uh, photos from the renovation and uh, from the renovation uh, part. So you can see the demolition, the demolition of the building, uh, on both external and uh, internal. Uh, I will show you the video. of course you can see uh, the results of our renovation of the building. Uh, the most uh, challenging was also uh, that uh, the new part that you can see of the right and uh, old part where we installed uh, panels from Pitender project suits together. But I think that as you can see on this on these photos the results it's quite um, okay. And the next steps uh, will be monitoring um, uh, phase 
And also uh, in the coming weeks, we will also perform the COVID analysis uh, the same way ha that has been done in Gdynia. And we will present the results to our partner city of Warsaw. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Piotr. Now we have the last presentation from P2 Endure Projects and I'm just making presenter my colleague Claudia. And uh, again, uh, I remind you that uh, if you have questions also for Piotr, please do it and we are going to answer at the very end. So Claudia, now we see your welcome, not yet your screen. Sorry. Just a few seconds. Okay, now we see it, not in presentation mode yet. There's something blocked, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it, it, it happened also <laughs> to me at the beginning, so I understand the feeling, <laughs> don't worry. Meanwhile, please, if you have any questions, curiosities or doubt about our project, uh, please uh, do not hesitate to use uh, the question panel. Okay, now, Claudia, the floor is yours, thanks. Okay, thank you, Michelle. I'm Claudia, I'm a consultant and I'm working for RINA and now uh, I'll show you the project survey results. Uh, in order to investigate the interest about p 2 endure project solutions and demo cases and improve the project technologies in the future, a survey has been performed. The questionnaire has been implemented through Google Form and sent to experts in the field of building or renovation. The questionnaire has been sent to a total of 1,064 stakeholders and 53 questionnaires have been collected and the following slides report main survey results. The respondents at the start of the questionnaire were briefly explained the characteristics of P2NG renovations for REM modular process, in marketplace and local renovation factory, building information modeling, 3D scanning and 3D printing techniques for historical buildings. Question number one was which of the mentioned innovation they find most interesting and 35% of them choose the 3D scanning and 3D printing techniques for historical buildings, followed by a 25% of building information modeling, a 23% of a 4M modular process and 17% of a marketplace and local renovation factory. Question number two was, for what reason did you choose the previous answer? The most selected was 3D scanning and 3D printing techniques, and these are the most uh, uh, selected answers. It allows the preservation of our historical heritage, make historical building maintenance cheaper, it can be cost saver and can be an effective economic growth driver, obtaining a nice place with sustainable costs. Uh, these, um, these two, uh, sentences you see in bold because they summarize most of the answers we received during uh, the, the survey. Contributes uh, greatly to the scale up of historic building renovation. It would be an excellent and fast aid in the conservative restructuring of inestimable patrimonies as Notre Dame in Paris, for example. They must uh, really to use innovation among the four. 3D scan is the future of reverse engineering and it is very useful to understand new objects and it is an opportunity of technology transfer with a high degree of automation, reducing time of implementation. Question number three was uh, about p 2 and marketplace. What do you think about p 2 and marketplace? And uh, in the figure on the right, you can see a word cloud uh, where the main adjectives used by respondents to describe p 2 and marketplace are shown. The biggest words are integration, innovative, promising, opportunity, interesting, adaptation, efficient, ambitious, and uh, this um, means that the description of a marketplace we showed uh, in our survey aroused some good uh, adjectives among our respondents. 
On the left, you can see the sentences uh, which summarize uh, the main answers received. So very innovative solution to change the market of construction components for deep renovation, a good opportunity to reduce costs, boost logistics, quality and know-how. Integration, it allows the integration of all of partners into a new business model that helps to raise the profit of the partners by reducing construction errors and mistakes. The project is interesting and stimulating and it can represent a virtual place where demand can meet offer and competencies. Question number four was, uh, among p 2 endure innovative solutions, which are the most interesting solutions developed within p 2 endure project? And uh, the 19% choose a smart energy efficient window, followed by on-site 3D printing and robotics and compact energy storage. So smart energy efficient window is uh, the most interesting innovative solution for our respondents. Question number five was, are you aware of any products with similar features? And the 67% said no. Uh, question number six, do you already use a similar product? The 90% said no. And then the question number seven, if yes, what kind of related to the previous question? They said that they use prefabricated panels, beam electrical designs, a similar concept to the folding balcony, although it's not work over but limited to inclined roofs, compact energy storage, 3D printing, 3D scanner, thermal scanning, comfort eye, and PMP prefabricated HVAC. Question number eight was, uh, would you be interested in integrating these solutions in your retrofitting activities? If yes, which ones? 31 respondents up to 53 answered positively and specified their interest as shown in the graph below. So uh, the, the most selected answer was smart energy efficiency window once again for the 14%, followed by compact energy storage and multifunctional panels. Other important feedbacks obtained from who said which would be interested in some solutions were, yes, I would be interested in all of those innovative solutions associated with energy efficiency. All presented solutions are interesting to be integrated in retrofitting activities where applicable. It seems a great tool for the implementation of deep renovation. Question number nine was, do you think integrating these solutions in your retrofitting activities would be feasible? Please explain. 29 respondents up to 53 think it's possible to integrate this solution in the retrofitting activities, mainly after a cost-benefit analysis. In particular, they highlight the ease to install these solutions. Question number 10 was, which features of this solution do you think should be further developed? And the on-site 3D printing and robotics is the main selected one with a 23%, smart energy efficient windows with a 17% and folding balcony with 13%. Then uh, P2 Endure demo cases were briefly explained to our respondents and asked which demo case represents best your city. Genoa is the most selected answer followed by Ancona. And uh, considering deep renovation typology, the most selected is reported in the graph on the right. So the 71% selected residential building and districts. The last question was, uh, would you be interested in replicating these uh, renovation strategies? And 60% of our respondents say yes. Concluding and uh, summarizing our results, we can see that uh, um, 3D scanning and 3D printing techniques is considered as the most interesting P2 and renovation because for the respondents it allows the preservation of our historical heritage and make historical buildings maintenance cheaper. P2 and marketplace is considered a very innovative solution to change the market of, of construction components for deep renovation and a good opportunity to reduce costs, boost logistics, quality and know-how allowing the integration of all partners into a new business model that helps to raise the profit and the partners by reducing construction errors and mistakes. Smart energy efficient windows is considered the most interesting innovative solution for the respondents allowed by on-site 3D printing and robotics and compact energy storage. 31 respondents up to 53 say that they would be interested in integrating some of these solutions in their retrofitting activities. The majority would be interested in integrating smart energy efficient window, compact energy storage, and multifunctional panels.
Deep renovation of residential building and district is the building renovation type more representative of the needs of the respondent city. And the 60% of respondents would be interested in replicating this renovation strategy. So we can conclude that the general perception of uh, about stakeholder interest about P2N2 innovative solutions is good because the project is considered interesting in all its components. Thank, Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Claudia. Yes, it was also, I mean, we received also positive feedback during the previous live poll. So yes, I believe it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we change the scenario a little bit and I'm giving the floor to my colleague Paola Robello, who is going to introduce us to a completely different project, which is called Envision. So Paola, when you, you are ready, you can share your screen. And uh, I remind you again, I know that I can be boring, but if you have uh, questions for Claudia, you want to know more about the Peter and Dury Marketplace, please uh, do not hesitate. So thank you, Fla Paola, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Michelle. I hope you can uh, see my screen. So my name is Paola Robello and uh, I work for Rina Consulting, as Michelle said previously, and uh, I'm very glad and honored to be here today to present the Envision project in which Rina is involved uh, among the other activities as leader of uh, um, dissemination. So um, Envision stands for energy harvesting by invisible solar integration in building skins. and as you can guess from the title, is about developing a full uh, renovation concept uh, thanks to which we can exploit uh, all the building surfaces, both vertical and horizontal, both opaque and transparent for harvesting solar energy. Um, it's a quite, uh, I would say, um, challenging and uh, uh, big project. It lasts uh, 54 months. We are now at month 36, so in the second half of the project. And in fact, we are moving from the technology development to their demonstration in, in relevant environment. It's articulated in a work package and we can rely on a I would say fantastic consortium made up of partners coming from different world. As you can see, we have some big players in the field of glass manufacturing, in uh, painting, coatings and uh, chemical in general, but also some uh, energy um, providers, uh, prefab companies, uh, research centers, and of course, uh, we have TNO, which is the project coordinator. Um, so before to go into explain to you the concept uh, underlying and vision, I would like to give you a little bit of context of why it's so important to uh, effectively um, manage the solar harvesting um, in buildings. So why it's so important to make buildings not only consumers but uh, active producers of energy. As uh, um, some of the previous speakers, in particular Andre, reminded, uh, well we have some very ambitious target set by the European Commission. In particular, we want to be energy neutral by 2050. And, um, and the fact that I think we are all quite aware of is that buildings are responsible for large part of consumption, 40% of energy consumption and 36 uh, um, CO2 emissions. Um, moreover, we have to consider that the building stock in Europe is quite old. So uh, more than 80%, 85% of buildings were built before 1990. And so they have uh, poor energy performances, but I would say that they are also in poor structural conditions. So we can envisage that in the future, and but actually some buildings are already undergoing some major renovation. And that's good uh, because it's ascertained that uh, um, energy renovation are more likely to happen in combination with structural intervention, especially if we consider the facade of a building that Envision is targeting. Um, one innovation that we would like to propose with Envision is to use not only the, uh, um, the roof, where usually uh, solar collectors are um, placed, uh, but also the facades. Um, and this uh, would uh, um, enable us to rely on uh, more than 120 billion of square meters of potential surfaces to be used to produce uh, energy. 
Um, on top of this, I would like to add also that uh, um, Envision is a, represents a good opportunity uh, for some countries to uh, move from a fossil fuel dependency because uh, um, many countries rely on fossil fuel, especially for space heating. So moving to a concept where we use heat pump uh, and uh, um, combined with the uh, energy harvesting panels uh, could really make the difference in the transition towards the use of renewable energy sources, not only for uh, space cooling, but also for space uh, eating. So um, just to give you some, uh, to explain to you in a very simple way, uh, the concept which is uh, uh, behind Envision, I would like to use a, a, a sort of motto that was uh, created by the project coordinators. So uh, grab as much as you can without noticing. Uh, that translated in a, a more scientific language means that in Envision, we are targeting to uh, absorb, to use, uh, the near infrared radiation. So uh, if you look at the, the graph, uh, it's this part of the solar spectrum. It, it represents the 50% of the solar spectrum. So it's a quite significant portion of uh, the solar radiation. And sometimes it is neglected because it's invisible to the human eye. But uh, this is uh, the, um, its strength because since it's invisible, we can harvest it, we can absorb it uh, without uh, uh, affecting the aesthetic. So basically we can use uh, solar collectors of different colors and uh, this is helpful if we want to invisible integrate them in the solar facades. Uh, now it's time for the first question. Yes, I'm launching it right now. So we would like to know if you were a bit aware about the potentiality of this near infrared radiation thermal energy harvesting. So uh, were you aware of its existence? Uh, do you see any potential? So the answer here is just two or yes or no. I can tell that people are already voting. So for 44% um, voted. I would like maybe to wait for a few seconds more so that uh, all attendees uh, uh, can vote. I see that uh, we have several attendees connected. So please, uh, if you are there, let, let's give us your opinion about this. So 72% voted. Okay. I'm closing the live poll uh, right now and I'll share the result. So finally, we have 31% that were ab aware about this potentiality and 69% were not. So okay. I'm glad that you are here because you can <laughs> know more. <laughs> okay, Paula, you can go on. Yes, definitely. Okay. Um, so, um, I think that I already made uh, the point pretty clear. I mean, the objective of Envision is to develop technologies that uh, uh, enable to active harvesting the solar energy using all the building surfaces without uh, affecting the aesthetic of the building facade. Uh, the other uh, objective is to provide technologies that are quite flexible and modular, so easy to install, easy to maintain, and so granting a large scale deployment uh, potential. Um, another point that we are tackling in the project is to investigate uh, how these technologies can interact uh, with the grid, how they can fed the grid. So the idea is to use this, the, this, uh, this energy that we are uh, harvesting not only to serve the uh, apartments, but also to fed the grid and to possibly also be stored. And, uh, and of course, uh, we aim to develop a cost-effective uh, technology, hopefully with a ROI lower than um, 10 years. So, um, as anticipated, uh, we are developing technologies for both the opaque surfaces and the transparent surfaces. Concerning the opaque surfaces, we are developing solar collectors, uh, both covered with the glass and uncovered. Um, the main innovation here is that uh, usually uh, solar collectors are quite, let me say, ugly in the sense that uh, in order to improve their harvesting performances, they are made of dark color. And even if there are options on the market, they are quite uh, expensive and the number of colors available is limited. This is the reason why 
Axon Nobel, TNO, and also Pilkington are developing uh, innovative coatings to be applied directly on the uncovered solar collectors or on the glass to be used for covered uh, solar heat collectors that uh, um, uh, improve uh, the uh, absorbing capacity and so the efficiency of the solar collectors and at the same time are um, pleasant to be seen. Um, of course, we are also developing some technologies for the transparent surfaces. So we have the smart ventilated window developed by Bigitech. It's uh, basically a triple glazing uh, unit uh, module uh, with the NIR absorbing glass integrated and provided with the ventilated chambers that uh, enables the recirculation of air that can be used in winter to uh, support the ambient eating, the inside ambient eating, and in summer to produce a domestic hot water and then we have the PV harvesting glass developed by Pilkington. Uh, it's basically a variation of the already available building integrated photovoltaics but with a higher level of transparency so that it can be used on both horizontal and vertical surfaces. That means that you can apply it also to your window and you can still use a window because it's highly transparent, you can see outside, it provides glare control, light balance and so a higher level of comfort. Um, I would like to spend a few words also on the mounting system because, as I said before, um, one of the key points is to make this solution uh, really, um, I mean, easy to install, easy to maintain, modular and flexible. So Amergo developed uh, a concept, a click-on system to easily apply the panels. It's already a solution patented, so this is the results we achieved within the project. And so basically the idea is that uh, it is possible to um, build a new envelope on the existing one by simply adding this frame and then of course the panels are made modular so that we can respect the boundary conditions such windows and doors and they are easy to install and also easy to remove for maintenance and of course also the other technologies are um, quite compact and modular so that can be applied on the building minimizing the um, working time and the disruption for occupants. Uh, so here again we would like to, to hear the audience opinion. Yes, so I just uh, launched uh, the second live poll. The question is, which of the described technologies did you find more interesting? So the covered solar collectors, the uncovered solar collectors, the ventilated smart window or the PV glass? I see that 20% of you have already voted. We are really curious to know your opinion. So please uh, take your time and uh, uh, give uh, us an answer about the most interesting technology according to you. So 50% of you voted, maybe you are still, I mean, from my side, these are all very interesting technologies, <laughs> but of course uh, <laughs> it's obvious. <laughs> So 72% voted, okay, almost 80%. And uh, I think I'm closing now the project survey and I'm sharing the results. So finally, we have 14% interested in the covered solar collectors. No one interested, it seems, to the uncovered solar collectors. Uh, the ventilated window and the PV glasses both gain a lot of interest from our audience and respectively 43% uh, each. So thank you very much for voting and we can go on. Okay. <laughs> Good. A very, very interesting answer. We, we will elaborate on this within the project. Anyway, um, so uh, yes, in Envision we have uh, a two-step demonstration process. Uh, first, the technologies were tested in sort of mock-up demos at the Solar Beat in the Netherlands, which is a high-tech laboratory at the University of Eindhoven, where we tested the solar collectors and the PV windows. And then at the EDF facilities at Best Lab, we tested the we first tested the ventilated window. Uh, so thanks to results obtained, we were able to fine-tune the technologies and to improve some aspects uh, before to moving on to the real case demonstrations that is going to happen in three demo sites. Uh, actually, the PV glass will be are actually being demonstrated at Pilkington and headquarters in Austria, as you can see in the facade has already been renovated. 
um, then we will have demonstration in Italy at the University campus of Savona, where we are going to test the uh, solar collectors uh, as well as the smart window. Uh, as you can see, um, some. Uh, oh, I see Augusta. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I wrap up. Um, yes, yeah, some testing on the uncovered solar collector is, uh, is is currently ongoing, and here it's interesting because the campus has a local smart grid, so we can test actually how the panels interact with the distributing network and the smart grid. And um, last but not least, we will have a full uh, renovation in a number of typical road dwellings in the Netherlands. Um, well, that's pretty much it from my side. I just want to remind you that our coordinator is TNO in the person of Bart Eric, so please do not hesitate to contact him or us for having additional details. Of course, we can exploit the question and answer session today, but anyway, I remind you that if we have a website with a contact form, you can subscribe for our newsletter, and of course, we can you can follow Envision on LinkedIn and on Twitter. Um, last question time. <laughs> yeah, it's a very quick question. We would like to know if you are interested in subscribing to our Envision newsletter. And if, if you select yes, we are going to add you so you can receive all the project updates. And I think that 30% of you voted, but we are running out of time. So please be very quick in expressing your interest because I really need to close the this live poll soon. So uh, a spoiler, 80% of you said yes, but I yeah. think that uh, some, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, I, I needed to close the poll. I'm sorry that not all of you voted. Okay, some of you really are voting last minute. Okay, so finally we have, uh, uh, I'm closing it and we have 73 uh, people, uh, sorry, 73% of people interested in uh, receiving the, pro the, the newsletter. So we are going to add you and uh, you will be hearing from Envision project uh, soon. So thank you very much, Paola. And uh, now we change again project and I'm giving the floor to Daniela Riccardo, who is going to introduce us uh, to Insulate project. And uh, she is the project coordinator of, uh, of Insulate. So you can make her a lot of questions and she will also reply to, to your curiosities as well as Paola. So if you have a curiosity about Envision, we didn't have so much time to comment your live poll results about the technologies, but we would like to know your opinion about this. So please, uh, let's go on. So okay, Daniela, you, we don't see your webcam. Maybe you can turn it on. And yes, now we've seen your screen. Okay. Perfect. You can see my screen now. Yes, Would not in presentation easy? mode. Okay. Now. Perfect. Perfect. So the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. Thank you to, to you. Um, just give me, give me a second. I would like to... Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. Once again, my name is Daniela Riccardo. As my colleague uh, already presented myself at the beginning of... Uh, uh, of um, this meeting um, and today I'm going to present to you Insulate project which uh, I am the coordinator of. It is about the development of uh, uh, inno innovative lightweight and highly ins insulating energy efficient components and associated enabling materials for cost effective retrofitting and new construction of curtain walls uh, facades. Sorry, but I have some problems in changing. Okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah, now, it's working. Uh, <laughs> now it's working. Thank you. Um, the project started in August uh, 2016, and um, it is planned to end by the end of February 2021. Uh, this means that uh, for a total uh, time of uh, 55 months and an overall budget of more than 6 million uh, euros. Uh, the target of this uh, project is uh, existing as well as new construction. Uh, we are going to 
to develop uh, three different key enabling technologies for the application uh, in the Descartes and Walls. Uh, and, um, 13, uh, and, and the consortium is made of 13 uh, partners uh, around uh, Europe. Uh, as I said, uh, RINA is the project coordinator of this uh, um, of Insulate, and um, we have an heterogeneous con uh, con consortium uh, made of different partners uh, around Europe uh, coming uh, from um, different fields, uh, in particular uh, from the industry, uh, but also we have uh, a big player uh, and uh, universities. Uh, the main challenge of Insulate project uh, is due to the fact that uh, around Europe a lot of buildings, uh, uh, sorry, a lot of, of uh, buildings have been constructed in the, the recent uh, recently using the curtain walls system uh, and uh, um, a lot of them are now 30 to 50 years old or even more uh, moreover the curtain walls technology has recently moved from the office buildings to the residential application in particular to the glazed residential towers within the urban context this means that the windows and glass facade are estimated to be responsible of around the 60% of the energy losses through the envelope. Uh, therefore, the repressment uh, and the retrofitting of the cotton walls would allow a significant uh, enhancement uh, in the thermal performances of the buildings um, in general and could uh, contribute to uh, minimize uh, the uh, discomfort to the occupants. Um, uh, in addition, um, the main breakthrough of uh, the Insulate project uh, is uh, due to the development of uh, uh, the curtain wall modules uh, where the thermal and acoustic insulation are provided by uh, the novel Insulate glaze based on the VIG technology and the Insulate foam in the spandrel in combination with the state-of-the-art uh, low energy coated glasses, including uh, also thermochromic coated glasses glass with additional self-cleaning and anti-foggy functionalities, functionalities. The insulate module allows, therefore, to achieve uh, interesting thermal and mechanical performances according to the technical standards and, uh, and requirements, as well as uh, the identified market drivers. Uh, we already anticipated the, the key enabling technologies uh, and now I'm going to give you uh, additional details on, uh, on, that, on them. In particular, um, the main technology is based on the lightweight and thin double pane vacuum insulated glass uh, with innovative sealant and getter technologies for the transparent part of the facade module and windows application. Uh, regarding the highly insulated foam, it is uh, based on monocomponent or bicomponent element, uh, both again for uh, the uh, module application, fa facade module application, as well as for the windows. And now it is the time to the live pool, a very quick yeah. live pool. Yes, I'm launching it. Uh, I warn you that uh, there is uh, a slight mistake in one of the answers. So the first option, of course, stands just for yes, the second for no, and the third for not in detail. And the question is, uh, are you aware of insulated vac vacuum insulated glass technology and its potential? So uh, people are answering it. 40% voted for now. Let's wait for a few seconds more to give the opportunity to all our attendees today to give uh, us their opinion, to express what they think about the insulated technology. So almost 70% of our audience voted. I see that no more answers are coming. So I'm going to close this live poll and I'm sharing the results. So 45% uh, of our audience is aware of uh, the uh, VIG uh, potential, while 27% was not aware or not aware in detail. So I think okay. it's good. And 
you can go on with the, with the presentation. Yes, thank you. Thank you, uh, Michelle. Uh, it is very interesting for us uh, because now I can give you additional details uh, on the VIG technologies that is very interesting and challenging, especially regarding uh, um, the performances, the thermal performances. Uh, in Insulate project, we developed a vacuum insulated glass and it is manufactured by Vigitech with a tailored manufacturing process, uh, implementing both the innovative sealant and getter strips uh, to ensure, as I said, the target performances uh, that are um, for the central uh, part of the panel of the VIG at 0 0.36 uh, and for the uh, overall U, as an overall U-value, the target is 0 0.44. Uh, that is very, very challenging in terms of uh, energy performances for this kind of, uh, uh, of uh, technology and systems. Uh, Bergamo Tecnologie is a company responsible for the development uh, of uh, uh, this kind of uh, um, panels, uh, um, glass gla glazing panels. Uh, they already uh, manufactured the small scale big prototypes, 500 per 500 millimeters, and the large scale um, big prototypes, 100 per 100 millimeters. Uh, it, is, it, it has been already fine-tuned, the um, scale-up of the manufacturing process, even if it is not yet in, in the industrialized uh, scale, but it is in the large scale. Uh, uh, and mm, mm -hmm. Vigitech is currently uh, performing the uh, manufacturing, the real scale VIG uh, prototypes for the pilot's application that are even more, more uh, that are even larger with respect to the larger scale biggest prototypes, as you can see. Um, in addition, uh, the Insulate project developed two different kinds of foam. Uh, a highly insulating monocomponent foam for windows application and a two component foam uh, with high fire class for spandle application. Both of them have been developed by Selena, a Polish company, uh, part of the insulate consortium. Uh, this, um, these um, foams uh, have been com compounded by elements with, with tailored cell, cell morphology, sites and structure in order to enhance the thermal performance is through the precise control of the cell nucleation events, which generates the foams itself. Uh, concerning uh, the sealant, this is another innovative uh, key, in key technology uh, developed by Insulate Project for uh, the application of the uh, and manufacturing of the vacuum insulated glass. It is an epoxy resin based sealant uh, in strips uh, form uh, developed by SAES, that is a, a, a company based in, in Italy. Uh, the thermal curing uh, allows a low process processing temperature uh, of this sealant below 200 uh, degrees and um, ten, uh, thanks to uh, the different types of application um, developed by size there is also the possibility of having the monocomponent sealant not only in strips but also in a syringe dispensable in a range of 60 to 100 degrees. This could be very interesting for the uh, full scale up of the production and manufacturing process. Uh, the sealant developed within the project is, uh, has a very high performance in terms of permeability because it is, extremely, uh, it is an extremely high barrier uh, for argon, nitrogen and oxygen. Uh, moreover, it is an active filler moisture uh, absorption. Uh, the, this kind of sealant can be processed uh, and, uh, uh, during the manufacturing process uh, at higher temperature, uh, but the storage it is necessary uh, to, to be at a very low temperature. Uh, for this reason, it is necessary to, um, to store it in, in freezer. 
uh, concerning the getter, it is uh, um, a distributed getter realized again by um, by size company uh, with an innovative zirconium based alloy with extremely high nitrogen capacity. It is a laminated double side getter strips of uh, 200 micrometers thick and 8 millimeters large. Uh, this kind of getter is very easy to be handled and uh, the position Positioning in air uh, is very easy. Uh, the getter activation process is based on radio frequency heating uh, uh, with a tailored uh, tool uh, and it is performed in the manufacturing process after the vacuum uh, pumping. Uh, in Insulate project, we have uh, an applica the application of the developed technologies uh, and the results in, uh, in, in three different demonstration buildings uh, located in different uh, regions uh, around Europe. Two of them are, are placed in, uh, in Poland and one of them in, in Italy, thus uh, part of them in the north of Italy and part of them in the, in the south, in the, in, or, in the north of Europe and part of them in the south of Europe in order to cover different climate change. In addition, uh, it is, um, the demonstration building has also uh, different uses uh, in, in, and, different, and are uh, made of different uh, compo in, components uh, and applications. Uh, going a little bit more in detail, uh, the first uh, um, uh, demo building is uh, uh, is a school located in, in Giorgiano municipality in Poland and this is uh, the facade that we are going to renovate, fully renovate with the insulated technology. Hi Daniela, good the to hear. Sorry to interrupt you, you have 50 seconds to wrap up. Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. But I'm, I'm finishing. This is the second uh, demo building located again in Geronium, where we are going to apl apply the windows, the insulate windows um, for, for, uh, for the renovation. And the last the uh, um, demo, demo building is a public library located in Pesaro in the south of Italy where we are going to uh, implement a door window with the VIG uh, technology developed in Insulate project. Uh, this is a, an, an overview of the main impacts in terms of durability, um, in, insulation properties uh, and reduction, reduction of, of the total costs um, performed by Insulate project. And uh, that's all, yeah. I guess, from my side, the life poll, uh, the last yeah. life poll of the project. Yes, it has been launched. The question is, uh, are our um, VIG foam facade panel technologies interesting for the building sector in your country? So the focus is on the building sector in your specific uh, country. Uh, this is a very important question for us, of course, because the goal of, uh, of our project is to bring the results uh, to the market. So not just the research, but to bring it for real to to the market so your opinion it's very very useful for us i see that 59 percent voted and uh, uh, i can spoiler daniela you will be very happy because for now the majority of people said yes <laughs> so it's very good of course for the project very okay. last five seconds to vote and then i'm closing the survey okay so I'm sharing the results, 92% uh, said yes, 8% said no, and maybe we can talk about, uh, about the people who said no uh, in the Q&A session. You can give us your opinion because there's always uh, some space to improve, of course. So thank you very much. I would like to thank also Daniela. And now we change uh, uh, presenter and I make Enrico Scoditti presenter now who is going to introduce us to another uh, interesting project whose uh, name is, uh, is Renozeb. But of course, if you want to discuss more about the Insulate project, we have still the final Q&A session. So thank you, uh, Daniela. We still have, we still see you. So if you want to turn your webcam off, you you are allowed to now. I'm, it's not mandatory anymore. And Enrico, we see you. 
I don't see your presentation. For now. Hi, Michelle. Can you see my presentation? Not, not yet. I see uh, like. A... Can you make a presenter again? Yes. Uh, sorry, just one second that I make myself presenter and then I make you again. Okay, so now you are presenter again. Okay, thank you. Can you it's see usual. the... Yes, now it's uh, not in presentation mode, but uh, we can see it. Okay. Uh, wait a sec. Yes, now it's okay. in presentation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Michel. Sorry for the inconvenience. I'm going to present Verona the project uh, where Rina is involved as partner after an introduction on uh, objectives and the, and the main element development uh, in the project. I will focus on the activities carried out by Rina, that is uh, the assessment of a property value increased generated uh, by Renozeb, considered to be an important trigger for the retrofit of uh, existing building. But I think uh, it's already the time for the first uh, pool. Yes, we start immediately with one question for you. And the question is, uh, which benefit do you think is most important to achieve uh, when retrofitting? There are multiple options. The first one is better air quality. The second one is lower energy consumption. The third one is aesthetic improvement. Then we have uh, reducing maintenance costs and finally increased thermal comfort. So we are curious to know what is your opinion. I see that almost 30% of you voted, but uh, I mean, maybe you still need some more time to, to give your answer. So I just wait a few seconds more. So you have uh, around 10 seconds to vote. So I see that uh, you are still a lot of people connected and I'm very happy about it. So please uh, give us your opinion. Okay, so I'm closing the live poll and I'm sharing the results. So 8% told us better air quality, while the majority of people, and in particular 62%, uh, thinks that the most important benefit is lower energy consumption. No one, uh, and I'm surprised personally about this, uh, thinks that aesthetic improvement is important, while 8% uh, uh, voted reducing maintenance costs and 23% voted increased thermal comfort. So thank okay. you for your answers and we are going to analyze it, of course, in the project. So Enrico, you can go on with your presentation. Okay. Uh, Okay, thank you. Uh, behind a series, a series of two aimed. Uh, can you see the presentation? Yes, yes, okay. correctly. Behind a series of tools aimed at improving the Hanzeb renovation process, the main tangible elements developed within uh, Renozeb is uh, an industrialized plug and play facade system that can incorporate different technological elements such as uh, prefabricated window module, multifunction, multifunctional insulation board, ventilation unit with heat recovery, uh, photovoltaic modules uh, and solar collector, solar thermal uh, collector and uh, intelligent facade controller, giving in addition to the designer the possibility to have a wide range of aesthetic solution as you can see from the images of the prototype. In addition to the facade system, the project has developed several additional services to support planning and decision-making processes. The most relevant are a cloud collaboration platform integrated with a set of decision-making tools and uh, an easy-to-use configurator for uh, Reynolds App Solutions developed uh, on top of IFC Builder, the BIM uh, modeler uh, distributed by the software house uh, CIPE. It enables designer to add uh, in a simple way Renozeb uh, facades to beam models of existing building. And these way models then uh, 
models uh, can then be imported uh, in an easy way from the energy simulation software, uh, such as uh, Scyther, mainly. Our ambition in the project is to develop a product that can convert an existing building into an ends up building in the shortest possible time without disruption to those who live in the building, simply adding a new facade to the existing envelope. In addition, the use of an industrial product offers other benefits compared to a traditional envelope insulation, uh, such as uh, reduce uh, maintenance cost over time, renew the aesthetic ap appearance of the building, that or now we know it's not important, allows the installation of photovoltaic panels and solar collector, improve the internal comfort, can even improve the internal air quality in case of integration of ventilation system. But there is sadly the usual little problem, installation costs are much higher compared to traditional renovations. Then the problem, how can we solve, how can we prove that Renault Zeb uh, is cost effective? that Renault Zeb is a good investment. Typically, to identify the cost optimal solution, investment cost for uh, implementing energy efficiency measures, energy savings and tax benefits are evaluated to define cash flows and net present values of any possible scenario of interest. The scenario with the maximum net present value is the cost optimal solution from an economic point of view. In this kind of evaluations, on the other hand, benefits that cannot be directly translated into a financial benefit, such as comfort, aesthetic impact, air quality, better state of maintenance, are usually overlooked. This type of approach, therefore, penalizes the use of more advanced and therefore more expensive product that can't be paid by just energy savings. To overcome this limit, our proposal is to consider in the cash flows also the increase in property value, through which we want to capture all the benefits from retrofitting with industrialized systems. This is why uh, we need to find a precise and reliable way to evaluate the impact of Renazab on property value. But we see how after the second our second and last uh, life pool. Yes, I'm launching it right now. So the question is, uh, considering aesthetics, so from an aesthetic point of view, can buildings with industrialized plug and play facade systems be compared to new buildings? So the answer is uh, yes, absolutely. Yes, I do, although I would prefer a new building and unfortunately I see that uh, there is no option, uh, no, 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 no option, but uh, yeah, we, so uh, we believe that it's important that you can just uh, give this to, I'm sorry that of course there is a mistake in this live poll, but still we can gain some results and you can use the Q&A panel if you don't agree, of course, with this uh, sentence. So almost all of our audience voted. I'm closing the live poll and sharing the results. So 8% uh, still believe that it's very important, voted for yes, absolutely, and 20% uh, voted that yes, but uh, they would prefer a new uh, building. Uh, so, um, I think that that's a good answer from our side because uh, just 20% uh, would opt for uh, a, new, a new building and that's very important. So, you are presenter again. Okay. And we can go on. Okay. Can you see the uh, yes. slide? Okay. To correctly assess the property value, we decided to adopt the hedonic pricing method. This method is based on the idea that supply and demand for heterogeneous goods includes one specific supply and one specific demand for each characteristic of such good. This approach uh, implies, therefore, the need to disaggregate a good into its main characteristics, which uh, must, therefore, be assessed one by one. 
In our study, study, we calculate the marginal values through regression models using a log linear specification. The dependent variable is the price per square meter uh, regressed against the true usual group of characteristics related to real estate, such as uh, internal ones, mainly the physical characteristic of the building, if there is an uh, air conditioning system, if the total square meter of the um, if the, the energy performance of the apartment and so on, and the external ones, namely those uh, related uh, to the quality of the neighborhood. Data, data related to physical characteristics, uh, as well as those related to their location have been obtained through the Italian website of real estate advertisements, uh, casa.it, integrated with data collected from OpenStreetMap. The data have been downloaded, cleaned, processed, processed, and organized in dataset through ad hoc Python scripts. Oh, sorry. Okay. Our work has covered three cities in northern Italy, uh, Genoa, Turin, and uh, Milan. The choice fell on a known context to more easily validate the underdeveloped uh, development models. To reduce too large deviation between the asking price and the selling price, uh, advertisement for houses on sale for more than 12 months uh, have been previously excluded from the dataset. In addition, only advertisement for condominium apartment, uh, which are rendered the ideal target group, uh, have been considered. Here we show only data and results uh, obtained for the city of Turin that showed the most homogeneous sample with a very low correlation between energy performance and construction period. In the images uh, on the right, you can see a distribution of average prices per square meter broken down by neighborhoods. And for uh, below, for indices related to the quality of the districts calculated with the data from OpenStreetMap. Here instead, you can see uh, the list of variable uh, characteristic consid characteristics uh, considered in the model. In evidence uh, are the, categori the categorical variable, uh, state of maintenance, uh, period, period of uh, construction, and energy performance, which also are the ones more likely to be affected by Reynolds Zeb. The result, uh, results of the linear regressions are the coefficients. Uh, the, the beta coefficients are highlighted in, uh, in green, associated to each characteristic. On the right, we observe how the price per square meter varies to the variation of the, uh, to the, variation of the values of the three categorical variab variables seen before. In particular, the construction period uh, the percentage uh, for the construction period, the percentage are uh, measured against, uh, against the reference period 1917-1990. For the state of maintenance, the percentage are measured against the condition acceptable. And for uh, energy performance, uh, the percentages are measured against the higher energy class. Note that the premium on the unit price paid for the upgrade from class G to class A is about 20%. The upgrade from an acceptable maintenance condition to an excellent condition, new or newly refurbished, implies an increase in value of around 11%, while an apartment uh, within a building built in the last 20 years is evaluated on average 27-28% more than a house build in the period 1970s-1990. Uh, uh, Hi, Nico. Uh, it's Augusta here. Just to let you know you have one minute to wrap up. Okay. Thank you. Yes. But uh, I'm uh, almost finished. Uh, after the beta coefficients uh, have been identified, in order to estimate Reynolds Zeb's impact on property value, we need to identify X and Y of each characteristic of a donic model related to pre and post intervention scenarios. Two possible intervention scenarios have been therefore identified, one the typical one, uh, which maximizes the reduction of disruption and involves uh, only the facades, 
that it is the scenario more consistent with our ambition. And uh, the comprehensive one, the full intervention, which maximizes the increase in property value involves even the internal retrofitting of apartments. We should also define a reference building to be used for, for the comparisons. Let's assume it is the target building char characterized as follow with uh, uh, 100 square meter surface area uh, in a, an apartment block with poor energy performance uh, built uh, in the post-war period uh, without uh, air conditioning and so on. The problem as, at this point uh, is to qualify and quantify which features among the ones considered in the model are affected by Reynolds Hub and to what extent. Obviously, uh, while for some features these mapping activities is simple and immediate, uh, a rose in blue, for others uh, uh, it is more complex and requires some strong uh, assumptions. For instance, uh, it was not possible to find a uh, public data regarding the higher quality and comfort of uh, apartments for sale, just uh, as it is not possible to define a parameter to measure the aesthetic impact uh, of buildings. But to overcome this problem, we assume, uh, for example, that the variable construction period uh, includes uh, aspects uh, related to the internal space quality, aesthetic quality of the building and the system, such as uh, higher quality and thermal comfort. In the, table, uh, in the table over right, we can see the impact of Reynolds Hub in case of typical and full uh, comprehensive intervention. And uh, for the particular case, for this particular case, uh, uh, with this uh, uh, reference building uh, and uh, for the intervention scenario, for the typical scenario, mm, it is therefore uh, expected the result uh, is that the uh, increase the expected increase in property value is uh, about uh, 70,000 euro the 39 percent in case uh, the 39 percent compared to the initial uh, property value in also in case we place the visa amount in the hand uh, in the far future 15th uh, year considering a discount rate of order of two three percent the net present value of such increase would be about uh, 45, uh, 50,000 euro, which uh, we think can really make the difference when choosing whether or not to retrofit. This is, in our opinion, uh, this in our opinion demonstrates uh, the true potential for Renazeb has economic also has economic opportunity, but in general uh, the true potential of uh, the uh, industrialized uh, facade systems. Uh, here are uh, the next steps uh, the, and future development the development of these uh, activities. We need to develop a more precise hedonic model, reducing, reducing uh, multicollinearity and teroscedasticity that are the two uh, typical problem of uh, these kind of regression models. Uh, cross-reference cross -reference data from multiple uh, real estate advertisement sites to build stronger database data sets, monitor uh, advertisements over time to detect other information such as the time elapsed lapse between the publication and sale, and develop collaboration with uh, real estate agency in order to obtain more uh, complete and, real, and reliable information, um, maybe also to get data about uh, uh, thermal comfort air quality of the uh, apartment on sale and uh, make the most of the potential of uh, open street map uh, developing uh, algorithms allowing to collect uh, information uh, more accurately and uh, that's all for from uh, for about Reynolds thank, thank you, you very attention. much Thank you very much, Enrico. Now, last but not least, I would like the, to give the floor to Professor Timo Hartmann, who is going to introduce us to Bean Speed project. So, of course, if you are still curious about a Renault Zep and you want to learn more, you can ask questions. But now I see uh, that Timo is already sharing his screen. I would like to invite him also to turn his webcam on. Uh, 
I just turn it on. Can you see me? No, wait. I turned something uh, else on. No. Yeah, not for now. No. Okay, now you're here. Perfect. Yeah. Sorry for that. So now I need to somehow get out of that view that I get back to the presentation view, right? Um, yes. Now I jump the slide. Oh, goes back and forth. Okay. Sorry. No, no problem. Ready to start. Okay. Yeah, thanks for the invitation to um, present the BIM Speed project here in this session. Uh, sorry, we don't see it in the presentation mode. We still uh, we see the doc Google com uh, without the presentation mode. I don't know if you have two screens. Maybe it depends on that. No, I don't. I don't. Let me try again. Is it better now? Uh, no, still not in presentation mode. Okay. Then I have a problem. It worked in the other session earlier. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Hmm. I mean, we can still go without the presentation mode, but of course, if you manage, it's uh, let me, it's let better me for our audience. And start the screen sharing again. Because it worked just like really well in the other session. Okay, now it's working. Oh, Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Timo. Sorry, sorry, sorry for that. Uh, um, no, yeah. Um, anyway, so thanks for this great invitation um, to present the BIM Speed project. Um, so my name is Timo Hartmann. Um, I'm the coordinator of the BIM Speed project. And it's actually a very nice opportunity to present this project because the session showed a lot about the P2Endure project earlier. And I see the BIM Speed project as a, a natural continuation of the of the P2Endure project. And many of the ideas that we have in the BIM Speed project actually originated on this P2 and many of the partners are the same. And so what I try to do is I try to make a little bit the bridge between these two projects and show how, you know, we talked a lot about exploitation and great products and, you know, we showed things and um, I'm working at the university and for us exploitation is of course also, you know, how we gain ideas on this project that trigger new ideas. And so these two projects are a great example of this. Um, a little disclaimer, I don't know if you joined the session on Wednesday, so some of the slides are the same, um, simply because I also need to introduce the project. Um, so I hope it won't be too boring if you saw my other presentation already. Um, so just a brief overview. This is the consortium of the BIM Speed project. So these are all the great people that work there. And um, I'm basically simply presenting what they what they have developed and, and, and they helped writing the proposal, of course, and, and so forth. And as you see, many of them already presented today because you know they're also partner on the BIM, uh, P2 Endure project. Um, what are the objectives of the BIM Speed project? So the BIM Speed project will provide all stakeholders in the housing and renovation market with holistic solutions. So what we want to do is there, we want to develop an affordable cloud-based BIM platform, a set of interoperable BIM tools, and validation and st standardized procedures for implementing renovation solutions with guaranteed energy performance in, and inhabitants' co um, comfort. So you see already we had a lot of presentations about building products. So BIM Speed is really not about building products, but it's really about creating a, a digital environment that allows you to manage these renovation projects. And the, the whole idea is, and I guess we learned that, um, also on P2 Endure, is that you know we all we can provide these great products on the market and they are plug and play, so we can install them rather quickly. But we also need to plan um, the renovation, right? So which of these products are the best ones, right? So we talked a little bit about the e marketplace already. So BIM Speed really originated from the idea that yes, we will get a lot of new innovative building products, renovation products, right? And we can actually improve um, the energy performance of buildings significantly while maintaining the comfort of the people who live in there. But we also need to have like kind of a, a process framework that can support this whole thing. And so, and we already showed that earlier, right? So this is the original 4M process um, framework um, from P2 Endure. And that actually triggered and inspired a lot of the, the work that we do now on, um, on the BIM Speed project, 
right? So how can we actually streamline and support this project, um, for this 4M process with digital sol solutions? And this is an original figure from the P2 Endure project. And you already see somewhere in the figure, I don't know if you can read it, the text is a little bit small at times, right? That there are already BIM solutions integrated in this, right? But they are only integrated some specific places of the whole process, right? And so BIM Speed really wants to create this unified, and we call this the information highway, basically, that you know can implement BIM throughout the whole process of renovation from early um, thinking about, you know, does it really make sense to renovate this building, making very early assessments of, you know, where do you need, need to renovate to, you know, um, thinking about which products to really implement in the building, going forward to doing the detailed design and engineering of this to the construction side. And then, as Andre said earlier, also, you know, allowing to measure already after and hopefully plan the next renovation cycle because things need to go on and on and on, of course. So BIM Speed really intends to create this highway, right? And one thing that we did, and you saw in the 4M process already, and this is also a little bit based on the 4M process, we did a broad overview of where in this process can you really accelerate things um, using BIM. And so what you see here, you're not supposed to read this, I just show this because it shows the breadth of really every every um, um, node you see here is really one application of BIM somewhere in this process. So what we did on BIM Speed already is we created a big overview of all type of different applications of BIM where you can improve the process, right? What we also did, we are aware that on the market, organizations who conduct renovation work are in different stages of maturity. So some are really advanced and they basically already drive Formula One cars on the information highway. Some are rather in early stages. So it's very important for these companies to understand in which maturity level they are and which BIM implementations can really, they can already implement to improve things. And so one thing that we do on BIM Speed is also creating this, this integration of the maturity level so that we can help companies to understand, okay, this aspect of BIM I can already implement, this aspect of BIM I'm actually not mature enough yet. So I need to learn more, I need to train my people more and so forth. Um, one of the important things, and so you see this is an asphalt paver, of course, you know, now we kind of know how the highway should look like. So we know a lot of things where you can use BIM along the way. Um, you know, we know about the maturity, but we also need to create this highway ourselves because the infrastructure at the moment is not really there. We have cloud BIM solutions, but very few cloud BIM solutions are actually targeted really specifically for renovation projects, deep renovation projects, and very few are affordable. So one of the goals is that BIM Speed has is like really providing affordable solutions and very few really support the complete lifecycle. And so one of the things that we're developing on BIM Speed is our BIM Speed platform, which is basically cloud-based BIM platform based on the French Crocky solution, um, where you basically can put all your information throughout the project and um, you get innovative apps that allow you to implement some of these BIM um, applications that we develop on the project or that you identify BIM use cases, right? And the platform actually, the, the big advantage of this platform is it is open. It provides an open programming API. So innovative technology providers across Europe, across the world can actually create plugins for the platform to create new BIM services according to the use cases. And on BIM Speed, we provide a number of these services just to illustrate this, but more we're hoping that we can really trigger a sustainable software development um, effort that really creates plugins for the platform independent of the platform itself. Um, what we also create, we create kind of rules how to drive on the on the BIM Speed Highway, right? So um, we are integrating with all type of other things. You know, we're creating different ontologies. This is how you should um, provide your knowledge, your information on the platform. We are, of course, integrating with other frameworks, right? So we say here, you know, here's a way how to, you know, integrate city GML or, you know, GBM XML or some weather services, which is very important 
we are creating guidelines we're creating a, a a building passport right so this is the information that you should collect for your building to allow continuous renovation to follow the 4m process and things for the section in iot platform so we are also creating rules of how to integrate with iot's and sensors and you know there were some presentations that showed that already as well um, and then finally and that's also something that p2 and do really um, um triggered and stimulated on this project of course we developed like you know this is like kind of a, a car doing a stunt right we develop like advanced applications and um we had this talk and you know like from the survey it also already showed that this e-marketplace i call it here still the configurator um was very well received from the p2 and do and project right and so here you see a couple of screenshots of this but basically the idea was of this e-marketplace you upload an existing bim model or BEM model, right? And then the e-marketplace already simulates, you know, the status quo of your building, right? And once it has a simulation model in the background that can actually simulate the energy use of your building, you can then actually choose different smart, you know, innovative building products. You see here the panels and the smart window and so forth, right? And and see what effect they would have on you know heating and ventilation but you also get an overview about the costs what it would cost uh, over the life cycle to implement these so that is the basic idea of the e-marketplace and so one of the things we realized in peter and was of for for example that it's really really hard to simulate the existing conditions of the building right and only if we have a really realistic simulation model of the of the conditions of how the building works today we can really provide like accurate predictions of what it would do in the future if we implement some of these innovative products and so that was one of the products that we said we also want to continue solving on the bim speed project and the problem actually goes further because it's not only important to be able to simulate the status quo of the building to do this but we also need to account for changing conditions so we know for example weather conditions change so if we have if we can simulate last year really well with the weather doesn't mean that in the future the weather will stay the same right so especially with global warming the same holds actually for how people use the building so what we see is of course a lot of in germany or you know in europe you call this the rebounded aspect right so once you did the energy efficient renovation you start using more devices and more energy right and you know now i can get the big flat screen tv right and so then you don't get to a fair com comparison of what um, these products really would do, right? So we need to kind of normalize this out. And so one of the things we are developing on BIM Speed is really ways to, you know, understand occupancy behavior in these simulations, different ways how you could use the building, but also understand different weather conditions on the simulation outputs to come to a more accurate, but also a more unbiased um, simulation of the specific condition that you can then use to really better choose the products that really make the biggest effort in the building renovation. And so that's what we call, or I'd like to call, not we, I just probably a term I use quite often, the behavioral digital twin that really collects data from sites, um, takes the BIM model of the existing building, um, fuses that data to create really a, a accurate and calibrated simulation of the existing conditions, accounting for energy, lighting, acoustic, right? So we don't only want to simulate the energy, but also comfort related things. Comfort was already a topic, right? And then you can really um, do the performance assessment. So you can do sensitivity analysis as what would help happen with the building if occupancy behavior changes, if weather changes, right? And you can really um, look better at and compare better different renovation scenarios. A um, couple of things before I close um, for questions, a um, couple of things that are coming up in 2021 on the BIM Speed project. So we really want to um, launch a BIM Speed competition. So we invite everybody who does a renovation in Europe and uses some sort of BIM to compete with the others and we hope we can collect really um, a lot of projects 
and really a lot of um, very innovative projects that, that that apply BIM to support some sort of the renovation project, right? And um, this will be a tremendous possibility, I guess, for everybody to showcase their project, but also for us as scientists, of course, a great um, opportunity to see what actually the state of the art is in Europe. And so if you have a building renovation project, we, we would be really thrilled to see you entering our competition that comes up. Um, if you are interested to learn more about the project, we have our BIM Speed Online Industry Day on the 26th of November from 1 to 3. And you can find all that information on our website, um, bimspeed.eu. Um, there's also a stakeholder community that you can join and register. You can download the flyer there and, you know, maybe and hopefully um, some of you will get involved and contact us on the project. And that's my short presentation um, for today. Um, as I said, website is www.bim-speed.eu. And, you know, if you have questions, um, we can discuss it now or you can always contact me as well later. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Timo, for this very good uh, presentation. Now I'm making myself presenter again, and uh, I would like to invite all our speakers today to turn their webcam on and uh, be ready uh, for uh, our Q&A session. So, yes. To all of our speakers, if you are listening to me now, please uh, join uh, me and Timo for our Q&A uh, session. Uh, I would just like to put a slide. For now, we just have one question for Envision project, but uh, maybe before uh, uh, going to the questions, I would like to invite uh, uh, Andre maybe to say a few words because I know that you were unfortunately cut at the beginning of your presentation. So maybe it can uh, Andre can start, and then one after another you can just say a few words. In the meanwhile, I am collecting all the questions. For now, we have just one for Envision project. Okay, perfect. Uh, um, indeed, what I uh, want to add, uh, but that is already um, well more or less added by the others uh, this morning. So in that sense, I think there is a lot of synergy. And uh, what I find personally very um, promising and pleasant that, uh, as everybody uh, could see at the presentation of Timo, it is not just a um, research project at itself. Uh, it will not stay... Um, on the shelf, uh, as we say, it is really uh, a continuation of more projects, uh, and it is really something that we are not doing just purely for the research, but really want to try to make the impact that, uh, well, also the EU uh, stimulates, of course, and that we will all benefit uh, from. So, um, and not only the relationship between um, uh, uh, BIM Speed and Peter and Jura, but also listening to the other presentations, I saw a lot of similarities, but also a lot of complementarities, uh, I should say, things that should or could be uh, combined, uh, in my opinion. Uh, having said, uh, what I wanted to, um, to add in, uh, at the end of my presentation this morning, were the sheets presented by uh, Margot Pinot, um, where uh, again uh, this ambition uh, of the Green Deal um, was exposed again and that uh, the community is really stimulated uh, uh, to continue uh, the research on it, but again really take some actions in order to to go to strive for this at least 2% of renovation uh, pace. So that's what I wanted to uh, conclude with. Uh, but again, it's said already many times. I am personally, but I might be a bit biased, uh, of course, but I am quite positive over seeing all these things uh, that we could make it. But having said so, uh, there are, of course, uh, also barriers um, uh, that we have to face because it's not only about theoretical things, it's not only about ICT uh, technical solutions, it's really about uh, economical barriers, legislation, uh, those kind of things. And therefore, I was also pleased to see the presentation uh, about the uh, net present value, the hydronic um, 
analysis, etc. Uh, because taking this from a uh, financial point of view and see whether we can make it feasible, that would be, uh, in my opinion, uh, the game changer and not only uh, the technical solutions. So we need everything all together and therefore uh, as well, it is really good, uh, these kind of initiatives, these workshops um, for us as researchers and the industry to, to meet together. But the real challenge is, of course, to well uh, get it out in the open and, and let's hope that after 10 years we meet again and that we see that we really started some different approach uh, to this. So it was not an, uh, a question to anybody, uh, but it was more a summary from, uh, from my side. And um, uh, well, that's what I wanted to share with you, that I'm uh, fully aware that we still uh, need to work on a lot of uh, things, but I am very pleased to see that there is a lot of bits and pieces already um, uh, developed. Uh, the only thing is, well, just like uh, the Lego system, put them all together and let's play uh, with it and, and let us all uh, make it happen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andre. I definitely agree with uh, what you just said. So um, I don't know if uh, some speakers have some questions or things to add. Maybe we can start with the, the question I received from Envision Project, and I see that we are receiving other questions. So first of all, there is some interest in the Envision technologies, and in particular, people are curious to know uh, in the current state of Envision products. So is there something uh, ready for the market or uh, which is the current status of it? Uh, okay. Um, so uh, first of all, I would like to thank again Andre for, for his uh, recap. Let's say basically he expressed, uh, I think, a feeling that is common to all of us. I mean, it's not the first time that we gather all together around the table to discuss, but I think that really there are some uh, complementarities among our projects that we could really exploit to uh, foster the applicability of our solution. In particular, I'm, I'm really personally interested in the e-marketplace platform developed by p 2 Endure because I think that now in this situation where we are, we are moving more and more towards digitalizations of processes and I think this is uh, really an added value for the for the construction sector uh, anyway uh, coming back to the to the, to the question uh, well yes I have to, to say that in envision we are we are really lucky because we have on board in our consortium some big big player um, so uh, of course uh, the um, I mean the development of the of the products is moving faster than we were expecting uh, thanks also to the capabilities that they have for what concern the adaptation of the the already existing production line. Um, so the product that is most advanced at the moment uh, are the um, co uncovered uh, solar collectors and uh, actually uh, TNO, Emergo and Axon Nobel are in the process of creating a joint uh, venture. So they want to to move to, uh, to, 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 to join forces to, uh, to produce panels and actually they have a good production capacity but still on, on, large, on large numbers. So uh, industrialization is, uh, uh, is quite far but still we, are, uh, we have still one year and half of, of project. Uh, the same we can say for the um, covered solar collectors. Uh, here the issue is more that uh, um, the partners are trying to find a compromise with, between a solution that is uh, uh, effective from a production point of view, but can also guarantee acceptable prices for, for the market. So some development uh, um, still need to be performed, but more on the production side. And uh, well, also the PV glass are quite, uh, quite advanced. And uh, so I think that we will be ready for the market well in advance than expected and then um, foreseen in the at the proposal stage. And, uh, and that's quite good. And, uh, and also the smart ventilated window is, uh, is in a good uh, status. Uh, here, uh, the added value is the presence of BG Tech, which are quite, is a quite smart, uh, I would say, small enterprises. So they have the capability to, uh, to adapt and product fast. So uh, we are still in the process of making some improvements from the research and development point of view. But I think that once things are finalized, that they will be ready to 
to, to produce soon after uh, project end. So basically, this is, uh, this is the overview of the situation. Thank you, Paola, for your clear uh, feedback on this. Uh, in the meantime, we have received a general question, I guess, so all of you can uh, feel free to answer. And the question is, uh, apart from knowing if there are already industrial agreements and therefore when we will be able to see this application on the market, I wanted to say that there are ideas for making implementation, uh, for example, in the life climate actions pro programs that move to higher TRLs to finance uh, their placing on the market. Have you ever thought about these tools as well? So this is the question. I don't know who would like uh, to answer first. Is it clear enough the question? They are telling us um, if we have thought of further developing uh, uh, this project uh, thanks to the life programs which have a higher TRL level. Yes, Daniela speaking. Uh, if uh, you want, I can I can answer to this uh, to this uh, interesting question uh, with particular reference, of course, to insulate project. Because, uh, as you have uh, understood, I I, I think uh, during the, my presentation, uh, we are, uh, reached a high TRL level, but not uh, but, but the, the, the results of the project, the VIG and the modules uh, and the forms and so on and all the, the technology are not ready to be uh, now uh, sell into the market. Uh, for, um, for this reason, um, with the, some key partners of Insulate Project, we are thinking on how we can um, uh, find uh, find uh, uh, supports from the uh, not only from the technical point of view, but uh, uh, especially regarding the financial part, uh, in order to um, to move forward uh, higher TRLs uh, and um, also for uh, um, uh, making uh, the production process uh, at a real industrial scale. And uh, I heard about life programs, but I do not know the details, uh, to be honest. Um, so we, we can investigate uh, because we are still, uh, uh, since we are in the last four months of the project, uh, we are starting thinking on how we can um, further implement the results of the project uh, and achieve uh, um, the, the, the level of, uh, uh, especially in terms of production, uh, for, for putting into the market uh, our products. Uh, so um, thank you for this interesting question. Thank you. We, I have also received the, the uh, message from the people, from the person who asks this question, and uh, he says, "Thank you, Daniela. Very interesting." Thank you. I don't know if other speakers would like to add something about this topic or add something in general to comment this event. In the meantime, I invite our audience, if you have other questions, uh, please do not uh, hesitate to, to ask them. I do have a question mm -hmm. for some of the projects. Sorry, Andre, you, you can also... No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. So, so we saw a lot of interesting products um, 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 developed in these projects. Um, what have you thought about like circu circular economy aspects, about the life cycle? Will you be able to... Uh, deinstall these things. What are the costs in production? Because one thing is, of course, to reduce the energy efficiency of buildings more. But the other one is, of course, you know, we need to take a, a broader picture. I think, and you know, when you look at the new calls that are also coming up from the European Union, a lot will be about circular economy. And um, maybe it would be interesting to hear a little bit about your thoughts um, because you are developing this product at the moment. Uh, I don't know who who of our speakers may give an answer or that. 
unfortunately, my background is in communication. So I found all of this project really, really interesting, but uh, I cannot give you an answer. I'm being honest. <laughs> No, that I was really directed to, to some of the presentations that presented these products and that yes, developed yes. on the project. Ima, right? I, can, I, can, I can answer again for, uh, for Insulate project, of course, uh, um, which I'm coordinating. Uh, we already performed within the, the project uh, um, an analysis, uh, a life cycle analysis and life cycle costs. Uh, um, in order to take into consideration the overall aspect in relation to the type of materials that are used for for the manufacturing our products, but also the, the, the manpower used for, for, for them, and also um, not only in the manufacturing phase, but also in the installation phase, because in order to consider everything. Um, so I think that somehow the, the um, life cycle uh, approach has been covered uh, and we are, uh, the results are very positive from our side uh, because it seems that uh, um, uh, we, we are able to reduce not only the costs uh, um, but also um, reduce the carbon footprint of uh, the materials used and so on. Um, also, in this case, we, we can, of course, improve uh, the, the um, analysis that we have performed uh, in, the preliminary, in this preliminary phase, uh, adding details, uh, and maybe um, we can also consider the possibility of uh, apply some eco-labels uh, to, to our products. Uh, but is, this, is, this is something that we would like to, uh, I mean, to investigate if uh, we will have the possibility uh, with the other uh, research project or, or maybe in, in, a, in a second stage, uh, not, not now, of course. Thank you. Thank you, Daniela, for, uh, for your answer. We still have uh, five uh, minutes left uh, for the Q&A session. And I think this is a great opportunity because there are still uh, um, some people connected that which I would like to thank for being with us from the very beginning until the very end. And before moving to the last part of our webinar, which by the, by the way, I anticipate you, I'm going to ask you two final live polls. So get ready to vote. Uh, and I mean, we still have four minutes, more or less five minutes uh, to uh, know a little more about uh, these very interesting projects. So if speakers of if attendees uh, do, would like to ask something, uh, please uh, don't uh, hesitate. Just just one minor um, remark. You just inspired me, uh, Timo, for an, another proposal. Uh, I think it should be something like uh, P4 uh, Endure, uh, plug and play and take it away. So that could work, uh, I would say. But on a more serious note, we did uh, submit um, also in the past or in the uh, September call a uh, proposal for a circular economy. And there are also techniques and methodologies, uh, of course, that um, are based on the things that we are doing in BIM Speed and P2Endure. Uh, but having said so, that is more focused on, well, also um, buildings that were not uh, constructed and built in such a way using plug and play. Um, uh, solutions, etc. Uh, but it could be a nice um, combination, I would say, to compare the existing situation, the old traditional buildings, compare it to the new uh, ones and see what other additional advantage uh, there would be. Um. Okay, thanks. Michelle, can, sorry, I would like to just add something concerning the life cycle and circular economy approach. I don't know if it's very much related, but uh, when in Envision we were discussing about the possible business model, one of the ideas that came up from the partners was to use a leasing business model, which is something quite innovative, but basically is a mechanism in which the end user don't buy the technology or the facade, but simply he buys the energy performances and then the facade the technology remains in the hands of the manufacturer so 
this could be seen also as a way to improve the recycling, reuse uh, um, of materials instead of uh, simply installing a facade that then is demolished and replaced. So this could be a food for thought. I mean, I know that the leasing business model is something very new and innovative, but it's something that we are considering within Envision. Great. Okay. I don't know if some uh, other speakers would like also to add uh, something about this. Otherwise, uh, uh, we can uh, uh, move to the final part uh, of, uh, of this workshop. And then, of course, if uh, some questions arrive uh, uh, later, we can still answer it. We have some time. So just one second that I'm moving the slide. Okay, so before closing our workshop, I would like to launch a, a few very last uh, uh, live polls. So the first one is uh, which project uh, did you find more interesting? So the, of course, as Andre told, it's, uh, uh, I mean, all these projects are complementary. Uh, but uh, still, uh, we would like to know which one did you find uh, more interesting today? So, sorry, I think that I have a technical problem. I don't know if you see my slide. Okay, I hope, yes, I hope so. Meanwhile, I see that you are voting. So, uh, we have 70% uh, people that already voted, but I would like to wait a little bit more just to let all our attendees who are with us until the very end to express their opinion. Okay, so 80% voted. I can close now these first live polls. So uh, the results, uh, I'm going to share it in a uh, very few seconds. So 9% voted between Dur, 18% voted Envision, 45% voted Insulate, 18% uh, voted Renozep, and 9% uh, voted Beanspeed. So, uh, in my opinion, all of them uh, were really super interesting and from a communication point of view, I really appreciate the personality also beam speed presentation, which was very nice and uh, it captures the attention. And then uh, uh, we would like also to ask something about this event format, uh, of course, uh, uh, we decided to organize uh, this event uh, in uh, an online format because the current situation uh, uh, really um, didn't allow uh, to uh, organize uh, another kind of uh, workshop in a physical format. But uh, we are curious to know if you like these new digital formats or if you prefer uh, uh, events, uh, uh, in, say, in a most uh, traditional way. Personally, I really like GoToWebinar. It really allows to engage a lot of speakers from many countries without the difficulties maybe to travel. And, and it works uh, really well. I mean, today we didn't have uh, so many technical problems. So uh, I think it's a, it's a good tool that we are going to use more and more uh, in, uh, in the future. So I see that almost 80% of you voted. So 86% uh, voted. Maybe we can just wait a few seconds more. Okay, so I think that almost all of you voted. So I'm closing the survey and I'm sharing the results. So finally, 83% said yes, and I'm really glad of it, while 70% don't have an idea yet. So yes, it's, uh, it's still good to know that you enjoyed this, uh, this format. So 
uh, I would like to conclude saying that, uh, of course, uh, we really appreciate that you have been with us today. I would like to invite you to visit uh, all the five project websites, and there you will find also the link to subscribe for the project newsletters. Uh, so please uh, do not hesitate to visit the website, follow us on social media. You can also find uh, all of us uh, on LinkedIn, and if you have uh, further questions and interest in the market development, development of this solution, we are uh, always available to answer you. So now I would just like to invite all our speakers to say maybe a few words or a few final greetings, and uh, then I think that we can close this uh, very interesting workshop. And I would like to thank uh, very much uh, also all our speakers, because you have done a uh, great uh, work for the organization of this, uh, of this workshop and the presentation. So thank you very much. Uh, yes, if I can, I would like to personally thank you, uh, all the attendees, uh, to this very interesting uh, uh, workshop we organized with the support uh, of uh, um, sustainable, in the framework of sustainable places. Um, this is an international uh, and very, uh, again, interesting uh, um, uh, event and I would take the opportunity also to thank you Michelle uh, for uh, for all the support and uh, all uh, the very professional uh, moderation of this uh, event. Thank you. Yeah, of course, uh, I didn't mention it before, but I would like to thank uh, also Augusta Clarisse from R2M and R2M company in general, because they were, uh, they organized this big conference. I mean, this is, was just a part of this really uh, wide and giant online conference. And it was not easy to, to handle this, uh, and they did it in a great way. So thank you very much, Augusta and R2M for this. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thanks also on my behalf, because indeed it was uh, coordinated and organized in a very professional way. So thanks for uh, providing the platform. And thanks um, to the audience too. Well, I am biased, as you know, to endure this presentation all the way to the end. So thanks for that. But uh, let's not stick to this, because as mentioned by other speakers as well, please visit the website, stay in contact. and. Uh, well, let's, let's hope that uh, the projects that are almost uh, ending, that it will be a beginning of some uh, new collaboration and uh, cooperation. So thanks again on my behalf. Okay, Augusta. So I think that in the end, uh, we have uh, finished a little bit earlier, but uh, we can finally close this workshop. So thank you, and I hope to see you soon. Let's, uh, let's be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.